Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the Ice House Comedy Club here in Pasadena, California, where once, sometimes, twice, we have some shows that we do in one room, and in this room we do a podcast. And I'm here joined with my lovely poopy McPoopers and Joey S- Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even spaz get through my there. name, I you know. fucking spaz. I shouldn't have smoked. Too much weed for Brian. Powerful Douglas Stanhope. Good morning. Boy. Good to see you, lad. <laughs> Ari Shafir's in the motherfucking house. Hi, It's nice to see Stanhope. And Tony Hinchcliffe. You're never here. What's up, it's Tony? nice to see you. It's so much fun to be here. This is an incredible night. Fun, fun to have you, buddy. Yeah, Doug, I'm so glad you listened to I was going to bail out. Yeah. We just filmed uh, Tosh.0. Oh. Yeah. Uh, should I lean into this? Am I good? No, you're good. No, you're good. good. Uh, and yeah, I was gonna I was gonna get an early flight back, and then Rogan called, and I knew he'd timeshare sell me into this even if I didn't. Want, but I'm glad I'm here. I'm I'm glad I. <sighs> it is an opportunity for a moment. I know you, me, Shafir, Diaz, get the fuck out of here, man. You you got to be a part of this. These crowds are really good. Oh, these crowds are beyond good. These are the nicest people in the history of the universe. These, these are crazy shows. Oh yeah, I didn't want to miss this. I could miss the show. <laughs> you missed this show, or what do you mean? No, I'm saying the, the, the live performing show. and having what? a they think. They want to see you. Come on. I, I, I'm happy now. People I'm happy. Are, I know you're happy, but the people that are going to be stoked to see you. Do you understand? Right. Like, like, you know, for a comedy fan, forget about me being your friend. For a co- As a comedy fan, I love stand-up comedy. And if I was a, just a comedy fan and I knew you were in town, I would want to see you. You have the opportunity to perform for a bunch of people. I know, sort of on the but sneak. you know that, like, uh, I'll go do a short set. How the fuck do you do a short don't set? Don't do a short set. I, go have fun. Don't, uh, get, don't worry about it. Just have fun. Right, yeah. That's all we do is we have fun. That's how, I don't, the place I don't, closes it, too, okay? That's I don't all we need to worry shit. about. The guy who's the, the owner is the coolest motherfucker on the planet. Oh! Oh, oh shit! Da, 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 da. Oh shit! Joe Diaz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Joey Diaz is in the studio, showing up. No mushrooms for me, thank you. Hey Brian. By the way, does everyone know? Uh, like, I don't know the podcast world, but everyone who says, "Hey, you're gonna do the Joe Rogan Experience, right?" This is not that. This is something else. But they'll right. if they follow that, they'll know. Yeah, to you to can this. find this just as right. This is the Ice House Chronicles. All right. This is uh, they can only get this on Death Squad on iTunes. And right. by the way, that cat, I like that cat better. Something about the new cat. The new cat's like super creepy. The logo? The new Exploder cat. You yeah. like the new cat? How do you, yeah, where do you like find it. people crazy, that do right? a logo? Yeah. I don't like all those shit. I think you busied it up with all the Wendy's and all that jazz. Oh, because it's supposed to freak you out. I, I don't like that. I like the cat itself. The, Who the did your logo? Itself? Who did your logo, Joe? Oh, uh, that's not. That's Brian's logo. That's oh. not my logo. It's, yeah, it's my well, logo. it's sort all of right. every, it's I, It represents... <laughs> It represents Brian and Death Squad, so it's, it's yeah. a little bit of everybody. Well, but what's Death Squad? That's it. You're in. You're in it. This yeah. is the Death Squad podcast network where it's a bunch of shows all put together, like all friends. Like all Ari Shafir started here. Tom Segura started here. Even uh, people, Sam Tripoli's on here. Freddie Lockhart, Esther. Yeah, even people that can't be on Brian's podcast, like Duncan, he's still Death Squad. It's very right. complicated. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll you have to look at the, look at the so papers. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, we were in uh, Opie and Anthony's studio once, and uh, Opie goes, oh, Joe Rogan brought in the death squad because I brought in Tate Fletcher and Eddie Bravo, like this MMA, giant MMA fighter, and Eddie Bravo was the first American to choke a Gracie. It's like I was bringing in all these killers, and we just thought it was so ridiculous, like the death squad. <laughs> and so um, Joey Diaz started calling us the death squad, and it, it just fucking stuck. Like You were, you were right. the first person to keep it going. Like Joey's like, come on, we're a death squad now. You know how we gotta do this. Yeah. You know how we gotta do this, dog. And I was like, all right, I guess we're going with this. <laughs> and then Brian, you know, started uh, calling the podcast the death squad, and then the word got out of what you know what it is. I don't know. It's just the stupidest idea ever that we stuck with. Yeah, I, I, I had a, <laughs> it's, it's so I used to call my fans the Sausage Army just for fun. That's a good one. Because a lot but, of dudes. Yeah, all dudes. <laughs> but yeah, now more chicks are showing up. And then some journalist referred to my fans. They were attacking her. Some It's a long ago beef that I had with a journalist in the UK. And my fans were attacking her on Twitter. And she made it, did a story about it calling my fans. Yeah. They were like killer termites. And I go, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> But then, <laughs> that's cool. but Opie and Anthony had like the pests or something. Yeah. I thought it was like that's too close. Pests, pests and termites. termites. I don't know. 
So no, I, because I you haven't have a direct, settled on one. I think one. you should go with that because it's a direct quote from someone. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a great Well, quote. I don't want pests attacking nah, me. But be, no, but being a killer. The ONA pests, leader. Leader. I don't even think they really use it that much. Do they, Brian? Where are the pests? It's, it's just a nickname. They don't but like, really but do I anything don't, with it. It was a more popular nickname a few years ago. It's like now they're just the fans yeah, they, of they, ONA. No, they still call them pests. They still call them pests? Yeah. Someone did send me a cool T-shirt. Again, I want a, same, I want a logo. Pests like, and termites aren't the yeah. same. Doug, you want me to make you a logo? I want a logo. I'll, I'll like, make you a like logo. The Howard, uh, the, 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 not the Howard Stern. Listen, the, uh, once this podcast goes up, fist. you'll get 10,000 fucking Hunter S. Thompson, is that what you're going to say? Everybody will draw. Why do you be, think I'm dropping it? <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody in America will be on it. These young kids today, they're on it to make a logo. You bust them I, out. They but I, I've, I've, I've asked my out. fans, and the problem is you'll get 10,000, and not, you have to look at them all and then <laughs> either not respond to the ones that suck right. or say, it's, that's not really up my alley, or we're going in yeah. a different direction. We'll just go direct yeah. to Mike Maxwell and cut this shit. Yeah. All right. Mike, Mike Maxwell, Maxwell is great. Direct to Mike Maxwell and yeah, cut this shit. Yeah, he's great. All right. Just He's done Mike some cool Maxwell, shit for me. Do, do, we got do this, need to do. this new right. Death Squad t-shirt. It's a chimpanzee. I got to release that, man. It's a chimpanzee with a gas mask on, and it says Death Squad Department of Health and Services on the, on the gas mask. Nice. Huh. It's a chimp like looking at you with a gas mask on. It's fucked up, <laughs> dude. When you're high, you're like, what is that supposed to mean? Which is not a part of the Death Squad Collector series. It's a different, <laughs> different line. It's my, <laughs> my brand of How Death many Squad products shirts. do you have now? I don't know. Quite a few. I want to get more. Factor in the vitamins. You, know? All you have your own it. vitamins? That alpha brain shit. What, what happened with you in it? Talk the fuck. You know, I didn't smoke You got to talk I didn't that. smoke dope for eight days. Right. I wanted to do an experiment. Because what really got me off the blow was when Romanowski sent me that thing for the mind. Neuro One. Yeah. This is the first shit that I tried first started too. taking it mm-hmm. three, four, five years ago. Because his main partner is Dr. Nelson. Mm-hmm. That's all Dr. Nelson specializes in. A bunch of football players go to him and say, why do I keep raping chicks on the road? And Dr. Nelson sticks two <laughs> needles on you, hits you in the head, and you're fucking healed. I mean, this motherfucker's strong, and that's who controls Romanowski, taught him all this stuff, and they've evolved. So when I picked up the alpha brain from you, I thought about it. And I bumped into your buddy at the UFC, and he, he rolls, and he goes that it broke his heart to stop smoking pot. But in the, in the thing, in the, he rolls better because he got more endurance. Hmm. So I started thinking about it. I go, you know, I'm sick and tired of running on the treadmill, and I can't go past like three minutes. I go, maybe I should just stop smoking for a week and see or a while. And when I got the alpha brain from you, I started popping the alpha brains. Let me tell you something. After the second day, I was fine. I mean, I talked to Ari about it. Like the second day I started eating edibles, but I didn't need to smoke. Like that whole thing had been broken. I didn't smoke till Wednesday. I did a show here. Some kid brought up a fucking bong. So he goes, um, uh, can you please, uh, you know, christen it? So I smoked the bomb. Besides that, I didn't, yeah. smoke. I didn't smoke Thursday. And this morning, I took two hits off a joint when I was doing a podcast. That's it. But here's what I found out after like four or five days. Uh, something's in it that rises your blood pressure. And I was getting a couple of headaches, like light headaches for three days. But Stan Hope will attest to this. It's really weird. Uh, when you start doing blow, like let's say you start at 11 o'clock. By 4 in the morning, even if you're drinking, the alcohol is going right through you. Your focus is so fucking strong. Like, if there's a chick with a barrel on, you're going to get that pussy because you'll hypnotize the barrel to open up. That's how strong your focus is. With a alpha barrel? Brain, if, let's say, she's got a whatever, like a lock on her pussy and her husband's oh, got the lock, belt. You're oh. fucking, when you're focused at 4 in the morning on blow, that's why people always say you drink and you fucking do two bumps and you'll drink all night. Yeah. The fucking blow goes right through you. But I was feeling like I was high on blow on the alpha brains without the jaw. It's very, it's real accelerating. It fills that gap. So I was thinking about it. I go, you know what, man? I could see how this would help somebody who needed to get off powder. I don't know about H or opiates, but I know for a fact I was on blow for 30 years. And when you're trying to get off, every little bit helps. And this could replace it for like 20 days until... You break the whole fucking thing. Until your blood pressure goes through the roof no, and you die. You know what? No, 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 no. <laughs> because it was... I'm sorry. He no, said no, no, it, not no. me. It was like the first three days. I just wasn't used to it. There's something... I didn't look at the ingredients, bro. So I'm not going to quote you and say, I know what tetracycline. I don't know nothing. You told me it's good. I like it. I took the fucking thing, all right? And I'll tell you what, man. I feel a lot fucking better. I feel fucking great. I went to the gym at 7. I fucking ran tonight. I mean, at 7 o'clock, I fucking ran. When I talked to Ari, I was walking out of the Y. 
that alpha brain makes you feel great. Well, it gives, it gives me mental energy, that's well, for sure. And I've seen you pop them late night. Bro, I made a mistake one night <laughs> and popped one of those motherfuckers like a pot cookie. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, alpha brain, a pot cookie, that's an intense situation. You got, you start, I started looking at the cats and talking to them like that kid in Go. Remember that movie Go when he went over? He was on the ecstasy and the cat was like, I know you're high. Fucking Duke come cam and they were talking about Koreans and shit. You get keen. Like, you eat a fucking edible and alpha brain and you're fucking sharp as a tack at three in the morning. Shit's coming out of you. you you're fucking dropping dates, Hemingway. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I have a feeling just from being an ex-junkie and getting off the powder that if you're having a hard time getting off the powder or something speed-based, yeah. meth or something, I think the alpha brain would help you at least for 20 days, 15 days. Then, I'm then, addicted to the couch. Would it get me off of that? This will get you off the fucking couch. couch this will so definitely good. get you it's off the couch. It's wicked good. Yeah. This alpha it's brain worse than any fucking. other addictive that. product. I'll just sit here for a little longer. Just lounging? Yeah, just sitting there. You'll pull your computer up to your couch and use that too at the same time? So you oh, don't, a lot yeah, of with your laptop but, on your lap till your balls are sweating so hard <laughs> they so feel hot. like they're losing weight. It's a good way. Seriously, listen, let me tell you something. And I know my brother's here. Fuck him. Him. Nobody knows about addiction. Nobody could talk about an addiction unless they've gone through it. I can't hear you. You can't hear yourself unless I help you. Dr. Drew could suck my dick in that department. <laughs> you understand me? I think if you really want to get off blow or speed or a meth-based whatever the fuck they're doing now, because now they mix it with bleach, that whole feeling, if you're really fucking serious and you take pills like this, whatever's in this alpha brain, I know it'll fill that void until you really fucking start to go crazy and then you go to the gym and by that time you know when you're trying to get off blow you just need energy to do other shit am i am i going. getting an intervention for drugs i no, don't even do no 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 <laughs> i just told you joey just, just, joe just told turned his full me. attention on me i just no 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 brother <laughs> okay, I, I love you so i just joey diaz so, experience i just need a mushroom fucking thing i don't give a fuck about addiction i'm just saying i know for a fact if you need help with something like blow just try this out for brain if you don't like it you know, there's, there's quite a few right people now, that say right that now. they don't feel anything from this shit. Quite a few people. It, but it I don't know. And I don't listen, understand. You know what? I'm going to take one right now. Take one. When yeah, I first started help, you're, you're not going to. I don't you know, think you're going to feel a way of drinking. Blow, what? Are they expensive? Hurt, right? Just give me no, one. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, not, gonna, it's not going to ruin take it like the last podcast. Take four of them. That's what I did. Oh, really? Take the whole bottle. Don't do what I do. Don't do what I do. Take two. Take two. Two's good. Don't get crazy. You know, when I first yeah, I wouldn't tell you to drink 18 cocktails Brian, and do a on? show. <laughs> How's it going, Joey Diaz? What's happening? <laughs> Nothing. Where's the bitches oh, tonight? Bitches? I have no bitches. Joey Diaz, uh, I heard. Bingo's I here. Heard, Did you uh, say hi to Bingo, Joey? Oh, there's I Bingo over there. Wasn't Joey it's Diaz up. embarrassed the other day? There was uh, some, there was some oh. dirty, dirty, dirty freaks here. <laughs> Joey, remember during that podcast we, uh, we were talking about this girl's first time squirting and then you walk in the room and it was very uncomfortable. You even le left your little sweater. You took your sweater off at one point. Oh, <laughs> you know His Christian? little sweater? You know I'm a fucking Christian dog. You can't be talking about that shit in front of me. She says she got fucked by a machine. In the air. So I'm like, you're, you're Aaron Burke Christ is fucking, you know what I'm saying? He, I thought we were talking about I Burke didn't know. I thought he said she got fucked by the machine. Oh, that's the way he said it to me. Oh, so, so I'm like, what the fuck? You can't talk about that shit on the air, dog. And they're like, it's, no, she fucked the machine. It's called the machine. Oh, it's like fucking machine. That's so funny. <laughs> Bingo in the motherfucking house. Have you, have you seen now girls fuck machines? And they actually, you can buy them now for your home. So a lot of cam sites now Sibians? are girls fucking. No, like things that go. Z, 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 like, like a, I want to like get a one of those for a doorknob. Like from my front door where you touch it and it <laughs> <Yeah>. spins. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Bruno had that, <laughs> that his sex slave was doing it to him. I never saw Bruno, man. Really? How would you miss it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I in the beginning. <laughs> Bruno, I watched moral. it again and laughed even harder than the yeah, first time. I like crying laughing. They used the baby's crib to rock. Don't to tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen no, it. it's wicked good. I haven't seen it. I will see it. I'm sorry. I can't cry spoiler when it's a five year old. Yeah, it's been a, it's <laughs> at least. 71. Yeah. <laughs> Apocalypse now. <laughs> I don't want to hear how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how some movies just don't fucking hold up. It's really weird to watch. Rain Man. Rain Man was bad? So stupid. Is it really? I never saw it then. It's so dumb. Tom Cruise is like, look at me. I'm the heartless asshole who just sells cars for a living. It's so fucking obviously set up. 
And he's like, stupid idiot, retarded brother. I don't want to deal with you, moron. Like, no one's that rude to anyone. I thought it was a delightful movie. No, it was Jesus. horrible. <laughs> When's the last time you watched it? Uh, 25 it, it, years ago. Top Gun holds up like a motherfucker. Yeah, does, it? Yeah, it does. does it? Top Gun, when they're in the bar, whatever. No, wait, don't fuck <laughs> out of <laughs> here. Uh, you watch Tom Gun, and you're like, Jesus Christ, this is protecting us. I got to tap out now. You, you know I'm what holds up, man? The uh, Kurt Russell version of The Thing. That's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't believe it was filmed that long. It's yeah. like 81 or something, yeah, 80. Yeah. Fuck, but the special that, effects that's movie yeah, that's coming crazy. out of the head. Yeah. And it was, and, you know, they had the advantage in the fact they were creating something completely fucking nutty. What so it can kind of look weird and almost fake. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. so it, it was perfect. It what was, movie? The thing. The thing, the, thing, the uh, John Carpenter version of the thing from, we think it was like 81. Kurt Maybe Russell was a star. Yeah, that movie, from whatever. That's that movie. Holds you know what else holds up? Alien. Oh, Alien. Oh yeah. The yeah. first one's from the yeah, 70s. Yeah, yeah. It's so man. simple though. It's just yeah. a, it's just a warehouse ship. It's yeah. just so simple that you don't. It doesn't matter when it is. You know, they're not trying to give you a weird version of the future. Yeah, I watched Alien and Aliens the other day, and Aliens. The problem was they they tried to get too crafty with the special effects. Like yeah. they had the spaceship flying through the clouds, and it looks so fake. It looks like. You remember when uh, Duncan had that show and he had you in a boat Space in someone's yeah, neck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what it was like. You gotta put. You gotta. Like I'm, I'm just I'm listening to you. But it, it was that fake. The aliens, like the the spaceship, oh, really? was that fake. It was so bad looking. It ruined also on the small the movie. screen. It looks some stuff looks way worse. Sigourney and Weaver. They had the, these. Big, I'm sorry. They had these big scenes that were painted that looked fine in the regular resolution, but then when you look at it in in, in Blu-ray. It's a totally different resolution than it aired in the movie theaters. So it's like really oh, sharp. Yeah. So you can see this stupid painting that's supposed to be the backdrop. It's supposed to be all these other spaceships. It looks really fucking fake. I mean, it just doesn't even look remotely real. What is that sound? The thing, original trailer of the thing. That's a, that is a goddamn classic, that fucking movie. If you're a comic listening in your car going, why the fuck are they playing shit that we can't see and they're not talking? I've been there. Don't worry. We'll get back to fucking talking <laughs> in a minute. You have to experience the fact that you're actually here while this is going on, folks. We can't spell it all out for you. So where is it? Where's the rest of the trailer? Do you know there was an earlier one? There was a previous one to this. Previous thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is a remake. The, the yeah. Car John Carpenter is a remake of of a really, really Black old and one. one. And uh, I watched the really old one the other Shitty day on a plane. Suit. It's it's terrible. It's so bad. Everything's bad. <laughs> well, I'm the acting thing. is yeah. bad. The uh, the the thing itself is ridiculous. It's so stupid looking. <laughs> TK Carter's in this. Huh? Oh yeah, TK oh, Carter was a bad shit. motherfucker back then, dude. I fucking forgot that. This is a great fucking yes, movie, this is. man. Holy There's shit. not a oh, thing wait, wrong is, with this is movie. TK Carter, the black dude. Yeah. He's a comic, yeah. isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I remember meeting him at the comedy store and going, yeah. "That guy's." Yeah. Famous guy, and I don't yeah. know why, but I I know it's not he from stand-up. He was in quite a few movies. He TK was great was in, in uh, the uh, corner, the preview, to the prequel to the Wire. Yes, yes, he was. He was great in it. And he he was in a, a quite a few movies, man. Yeah, it's not, not just the that thing. One. I'll t I'll take one more of these with a uh, with a cocktail straw, so I don't have to dip my big stupid teeth the, into the, the ice. The baby wants it in the right bottle. He needs it in the exact <laughs> bottle. <laughs> um, yeah, TK was a really good actor. That was a great fucking yeah. movie, man. That um, that movie could come oh, out. I, could have come it's, out today. It's, uh, he, he was in uh, with uh, Hollywood Nights. No, no. Uh, what's the Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn? Where? Oh yes, he was a driver and shit. Exactly. Well, he's a criminal. Yeah, they have a million dogs. Oh, that's a great fucking movie. And yeah, the Charles from, Grodin. Uh, Charles Grodin. That's yeah. right. That's a great fucking movie. That's how I knew him. Yep, 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 yep. He's the driver in that too. That's a strong. If fucking we came movie. up with the name, no one would give a shit. So let's keep no, going. It's, not <laughs> it's when Fletch was still hot. He was still a bad. Oh, it was before oh, Fletch. Dude. I saw that one. My Let me tell you something. Chevy Chase was, was Chevy so Chase was confident when he was in that movie. He was such an interesting sort of comedic character. It's really confident guy. Yeah, the super overly, yeah. overly like positive on himself. Yeah, remember like he would play these weird roles, like he would be like really awesome at golf, and it would be like real strange Caddy to see. Shack. Yeah. yeah. 
I came up. He's with a him. he was a strange guy. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, like it seemed like he lost all of his confidence. He was joking about like being able to get laid and being a winner. Yeah. And he was so handsome. Yeah. Like during the Fletch. He was thing. gorgeous. He was beautiful. <laughs> He's a beautiful Caddyshack, man. Caddyshack, he yeah. was really fucking He's a good. funny Caddyshack fucking, was he was funny really comedic fucking actor. Good. Caddyshack, dog. Really good. That was on the you know, uh, making of. And it was in his defense, funny. there's a lot of comics who became unfunny, but they stopped doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. They just quit. Yeah. Man, I think people Eddie Murphy. Through. No one says, oh, he's not funny. Well, he's making choices that, fortunately, you don't have to judge him as a comedian. You know, he's right, right, still right, capable any, at any time of being an incredible comedic actor. Like, even in that, that movie he did with, uh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, the movie about the car on the top of the building. Heist, Tower Heist, Matthew Broderick. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't yeah. see it. It's fucking great. In is it? Was he really? He's great. Look, but he's is Eddie the movie Murphy. great? No, the movie's kind of silly. <laughs> there was it was entertaining. It was, better, he was better in Bowfinger. Do you watch he was great any of those? Bowfinger. Do you watch Remember any of that? the animated shit? Once in a while. That even like my adult friends who I really agree with their comedic. Uh, uh, my manager watches all these fucking. You watch? Anim- Sa- I love. They're South Park. like children's movies. No oh, movies that movies. all these all these people do voiceovers for, like oh, Eddie yeah. Murphy, Shrek kind of shit. Oh yeah, do you I watch those with my kids. I've, I've watched those with my kids, before. but not on I your own. Big. You're not a big. single adult, no. forty-five year old no. man going to the Lemley and checking that out at ten forty-five. No, at night. <laughs> but in their defense, like Shrek, especially, it seems like it's like a little kids movie, but it's actually kind of a cool fantasy movie. It's like kind of a fun. movie movie shrek is it's just more of it's like a kid's movie but it's really well done you know, i've like, dvr'd a few that just look cool because I, yeah. I like to fall asleep to tv so i have like despicable me because it looks trippery kind of yeah. and uh-huh. i'll fall asleep and how just, was that <laughs> that's i don't watch you. it i, you know, I watch 10 minutes dreams and, yeah drift off and I go hey that looks cool and trippery <laughs> i like i like that sir you so like what oh. hey, I'd, li- I'd like to give a shout out to uh our waiter is uh-huh. your name eddie Eddie, Eddie, come to the ice Eddie. house and over tip Eddie. Eddie is the shit. In He's fact, shit. <laughs> he is. In fact, that's Eddie. How many Powerful people look Eddie. like they're happy to give you a drink? He's the coolest motherfucker on earth. I thought I knew him. Like he <laughs> smiled at me so no, big when Eddie's, he came in that I thought I must yeah. remember you, him. We have to admit, man, the people here are so cool. You and, and there's so, everybody that works here, like the whole staff, they're like super friendly. Like this guy makes all the di- as a, as a, 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 a drunkard for a living. It makes all the <laughs> yeah. difference when oh, someone so pretends does. to be happy to see you, and <laughs> you don't even, even look pretend. like you're pretending. It's not pretending. <laughs> that's not, this that, is like that's a, the happy, same as a hooker, staff. a hooker who can pretend that she's oh, glad yeah. to be at your hotel. Tell room at four oh, forty in the morning. So to fuck happy. you! Like, wow, I believe you. No, he's yeah. he's happy, Smurf. That's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> thanks, man. Later, brother. <laughs> yeah, he he really is a good dude. This whole place is filled with super nice people. <laughs> it's such a rare club. <laughs> it's so funny. Dan oh. Tosh, Dan Tosh was bringing up old memories yeah, of the nineties. Totally. Yeah. Uh, he was in a condo. Do you ever do Uncle Funny's in oh, Davie, Florida? Oh, in Davie, Florida. Absolutely. I worked with him. And Disgusting. The condo didn't have a bathroom door. We were in the fucking, condo. I had to call my cousin and pick me up in fucking Miami. <laughs> he had to drive me back and forth to Davie. Nobody goes to fucking Davy unless you have a felony. You know what I'm saying? Nobody goes to fucking Davy. I got a hooker with him, and he was a young, tender kid at the time, and Chicken was the opener. Uh, chicken. But I got a hooker. I called a hooker, and Dan Tosh was so scared of the hooker that he said he locked locked the door of his room because <laughs> I had called a hooker. What's hey? The yeah. story goes on and on. <laughs> Wait, he was scared of her coming in and robbing him. Yeah, and I was scared uh-huh. of her robbing me too. But you want to take a uh, chance? <laughs> I, I remember that she he locked himself in the room, and she said she came in, got my credit card information. And then she's calling it into the service and said, uh, uh, okay, what's the billing address? And I gave it to her, and I'm hammered. And she goes, okay, and what's your social security number? And I said it, and then I immediately went, what the fuck? What the fuck? They don't need a social security number for a credit card. It's too late. I go, I just, I'll just, i cut the card up in the morning. Ten years later is a long story. I get a bill for a, a credit card a collection agency for a phone bill that I had in West Palm Beach. I never lived in West Palm Beach, and it took me forever to realize that, oh, shit, that's what it was. It was the hooker agency? It was, the, yeah, the, the hooker and whoever she was calling <laughs> set up a phone bill in my name. That's hilarious. Anyway. Where'd you get the cookie? Those are the strong ones. 
uh, Divine Wellness on Lancashire. Those they're are not closing current. the shops, dog. Dolores? No, they're not. They're not closing shit. They'd be revolt at this point. Yes. People would revolt. They've gotten used to their it's free It's getting really creepy, man. I'm uh, I'm really concerned if Mitt Romney gets in office that they'll try to change things. Oh, he'll definitely Hashtag Governor Gary Johnson. That would be <laughs> nice if voting was real. Happen. Is that who I you're know. voting for? The, the most bizarre thing was how the Ron Paul situation was handled. You know, how they would, like, wantonly pretend that he wasn't in contention. Wantonly pretend that he wasn't a serious candidate. And it's just, you don't even have to But, look, yeah, you look wore the that. Ron Paul yeah. T-shirt on, what, Leno or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So. Let's throw on the Governor Gary Johnson T-shirt for fun because you have to wear a shirt anyway. I, I you, yes and uh, no because I think I don't think it's real, man. I don't think voting it's, is real. I really don't think it's. I, I don't think they would leave it unmanaged at this point. I don't think that you can just vote and put a new guy into office. I don't think you get even get into the position. Football players aren't there for the fans, but it's fun to pick a favorite team <sighs> and wear their colors. Oh, I hear you, man. Yeah. I who's, hear you, but the, the, the real problem is I think the, the system is completely rigged. The Electoral College is completely rigged. The whole situation, the way it's set up, it's so rigged. It doesn't even make any sense. So why isn't it on the Internet? Why isn't it one person, one vote? That's, it, it really should be that simple. One person, one vote. Prove you're a citizen. You vote online. One person, one vote. And then we would but, know what the fuck is going on. Well, first of all, I don't, I don't want to vote for anybody. But since that's in play, around, like, our lives have nothing to do with politicians. Yeah, they, I, they. I, I did. But yeah, they could. I they, did, could, they could change things. In a town of 6,000 people, I did. I got on the phone and I stumped for people because it does matter. Right. Yo, hey, about when are they going to pick up garbage on my street does matter yeah. to me. Yes. And that's my life. So, right. yeah, local politics... That means something. So Local I really you have to so answer real. to somebody. It's a small yeah. enough number, you have to actually answer to somebody. Two hundred and eighty yeah. million. Even it's governors. Like, matters. Governors can do a good job. The the real the reality is the idea of a nation of fifty different fucking states is ridiculous. In this day and age, the yeah. idea that yeah. we're you all you can't together, make a community out of three hundred million it's people. It's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. The the whole idea behind it is bananas, and you can't manage that many fucking people. But you can manage states. You can manage cities and you can manage states. You really can. And if everybody just managed cities and states and we just shrunk all the rest of the bullshit down, we'd have a way better experience here. Yeah, we're four presidents for four zones. That's not a bad four idea. Four time zones, Hawaii included, Puerto Rico. Well, 50 yeah, but then states. there would be some civil shit of some fucking crazy, we're going to rise up, do it again. Fuck it. Well, well, like, why but that's the thing. 50 states, it's not 1849. You can right. move yeah. now. Yeah. So instead yeah. of thinking about what you're gonna, where you're going to go to college, where am I going to live? Do I want to be a pothead and go to Oregon? Am yeah. I going to be a, a white supremacist and move to this state? Am I, <laughs> what do I hate? What do I like? You have 50 fucking choices right. where every state can, like, all right, be branded. Yeah. Brand your state. What are we going to be? Where's the money? Where's yeah. the angle? It's like casinos in Vegas. Well, well then you can fuck up. Theme. Exactly. Themed states. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but then you can fuck up and wind up in one of those states where it's Storms come through every year and wreck everything. It's got to be that, a That's a mistake. Well, again, there's, there's trade-offs in life. Uh, you're yeah. Like, yeah, but I'm seeing these people that are doing that. And, hey, is the show well, started? they're already doing it in mm -hmm. fucking New started? Orleans. Has the show started? Five minutes? That yeah, was a tweet I wanted to put out today and I'll never get to is, yeah, when I'm not helping rebuild New Orleans, I'm helping girlfriends move back in with their abusive boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, like how, all right, that's seven years. Oh, well, we're stranded again. We had nowhere to go. Fucking move somewhere else. Dude, that was a really black accent. It was so offensive. <laughs> I wasn't black. <laughs> I could see fat black chick. I could see if that was a fat black chick in my car. You got nowhere to go, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. up your shit, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah, I, you know I what? I just saw. I just mom. saw him on the uh, bill outside, and I like sometimes I I go, is that shit pussy accent the love master? I'm not sure. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know it might be. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Uh, I could tell. Listen, I, I just love that. Ten minutes of that motherfucker's phony ass speech. How they were telling him to talk and look this way and turn his head to the side. Who? Who oh, Clint Eastwood? Uh, no, no <laughs> Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I only saw snippets of that. I gotta I see. I don't even want to see that. That's I gotta embarrassing. see. Oh, I know. What's it got to do with with the fucking price of eggs? Clint wanna... Eastwood is done. I'll, I'll son. tell you what it has done. to. He's done. Here's oh, yeah. the thing. We do a celebrity death pool. Yeah. 
uh, and we're, we're making our own website, Stanhope's Celebrity Death Pool, that works like, uh, you know, where you can make your own. That's a long story. <laughs> Wait for that. That will drop uh, when I'm plugging it in November. But For the next year? We, but we, we, I got into, I don't know shit about celebrities. My buddy came up with this Joby Celebrity Death Pool. And so there's like 38 of us in it. Well, you're I'm in, in it. it. Yeah. He's in it. Oh, there you go. And like you get 20th. a couple of kills. I got a couple of kills. I love oh, these term kills. But the first year I did it, <laughs> well, first first year I did it, I was uh, like ambivalent. Like I talked Joby into doing my NFL suicide pool. He doesn't know football. But so I did it for a year and it was so much fun. Every day you wake up, you get on wiki death, see who's dead. <laughs> like, And so the second year, this year, I put effort into it. I'm sitting in second place right now, but you put effort into it, and it's a whole year of gambling. You really There's no like, season for death. Who, who'd you got hit on? Who'd you? Who'd you? Who'd uh, you I'm who'd trying to remember that, that fat black chick because she had cancer. Shirley Etta Hemp James? Uh, it might have been that one, yeah. Everyone had Etta James if yeah. you put any effort. Yeah, she was like, she's going to die within the month. Let's yeah. go ahead and yeah. take her. Yeah, they yeah. said it in December, and we were all hoping she hung on. Uh, my friend has. So it, what, my friend's you, in my I had Joe Paterno. Are you going to say, does this have something to do <laughs> nice. with Clint Eastwood? Nice Did you have Clint Eastwood or something? No, no, but no, when year. I saw him hmm. last night, I yeah. saw Eastwood, and like <laughs> every time I see someone fucked up like that, I'm like, Okay, and I'm, I'm not even worried about the context. I'm writing him on a piece of paper for New Year's Eve for next year. Like, okay, was, yeah, was he's embarrassing. And it, it, but my first thought is, okay, put Eastwood on the short list. At least on a radar. That guy's, well, you know what's really weird? Paterno, dog. You're a fucking savage. I what's, got, yeah, I got Paterno. What's really weird about what Clint Eastwood did was they didn't even uh, give him uh, a vetting. They didn't <clears throat> listen to his speech. Yeah, they no, just no allowed him to go up there, and he completely ad-libbed it. Like he had it's some fantastic. ideas in his head, you know. He thought he thought he was going to go one way or the other, I guess. And he I want to get to that place where I can just, oh, yeah, just walk on. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they and apparently Mitt Romney's like an exceptionally like control freakish sort of a guy. He wants everything to start on time. Everything's prompt. He's like a real proper sort of a guy, and so he just lets Clint Eastwood. Who the fuck go is going to tell Clint Eastwood? <laughs> well, we need to hear your material. You got four minutes on Letterman. What are you going to say? Isn't that interesting though? That when you're Clint Eastwood, that's how much of a bad motherfucker he is. They let him just do whatever he wants during the Republican national campaign. So he's doing like his version of a stand-up comedy play talking to a guy sitting in a chair. He was a mayor of Carmel. How are you going to yeah. say no? <laughs> <laughs> he's, it's, a, it's really kind of weird, too, because he's got like Obama sitting down in a chair. He's not even pretending he's standing next to him. He's pretending he's sitting down like he's giving a talking to. You know, it's really it's it's kind they, of intense. they only showed a couple clips on CNN, but they said mm -hmm. he was only supposed to do like three minutes, and it went. He cut into so, so time. The awkwardness in full. I can't wait to get home. I didn't bring my computer, but when I get home, I want to see the full awkwardness as a comic. Oh, you well, know when pull shit. Pull it up, Pete. Things, pull it up. No, no, yeah. Pull it up because it's ridiculous. Because there's there's parts of it where you know he he, he cuts like corny jokes, and they're like yeah. they're in the audience laughs. But you're like Jesus, Clint, what are you doing? <laughs> like it. it's like he's like doing a fake Obama invisible puppet that doesn't really talk, and he pretends he heard it say something. It's so dumb. Like the idea behind it is like this is like right up there with Mel Mel what what the fuck um, what the fuck's his name um, Mel Gibson doing that Beaver movie. Oh, uh, yeah, we tried to watch that. Yeah. It was no good at all. It's like right there. It's like right there in craziness. By the way, my friend is in, what, a, what? in a suicide pool of like 5,000 people every year. One person got Whitney Houston. Well, and our bingo, pool, bingo's and our, in third place our pool only of, on Whitney Houston. Yeah, our pool of like 35 people, we had like three people who got Whitney Houston out of nowhere. Wow. Thank you very much. During the applause. Thank you. I'll just wait. Yeah, this is really strange. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Save a little for Mitt. Nice. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what's a movie tradesman doing uh, out here? You know, they're all left-wingers out there. Movie Left of Lenin. Tradesman. At least that's what people think, but that's not really the case. There's a lot of conservative people, a lot of moderate people, 
Republicans, Democrats in, in uh, Hollywood. It's just that conservative people, by the nature of the word itself, are play a little more close to the vest. And they don't go around a uh, hot dog in it. So. Uh, Thanks, Hunter S. Thompson, for killing yourself before you became 82 but, but and ruined there, your uh, hero status. They're there. <laughs> and uh, and I, I just, uh, I think, that in fact, there's some of them around town. I saw John Voigt. There's a lot of uh, people around here in town. John's wow. here, Academy Award winner. The name to uh, drop when you have only one. Guy. And these people are all <laughs> like-minded, like all of us. Uh, so I've got... Um, I've got Mr. Obama sitting here. Here's where it gets weird. And he's, uh, I, I just was going to ask him a couple questions. Points but, to a blank uh, stool, empty that? stool. Uh, you know, about, uh, I, I, I remember three and a half years ago when Mr. Obama won the election. And uh, though I wasn't a big supporter, I was watching that night when he was uh, having that thing. And they were talking about hope and change. And they were talking about, yes, we can. And, and it was dark and it was outdoors and it was nice. And people were lighting candles. and. They were saying, uh, uh, you, you know, and, and I just uh, thought, this is great. I mean, everybody's crying. Oprah was crying. And uh, I was even crying. And then finally, I haven't cried that hard since I found out that uh, so there's Lock 23 have million shit. unemployed people in this country. And now that, that is something uh, to cry for because uh, that is a disgrace, a national disgrace. And we haven't done enough, obviously. Uh, this administration hasn't done enough to cure that. And uh, whatever, whatever uh, interest they have is, is not strong enough. And I think possibly now it may be time for somebody else to come along and solve the problem. Yes, one guy solves that. That's how it works, you fucking doddering tool. So, Half of these guys are fucking extra. So, clapping. Mr. Every President, eight bucks an hour. how do you, uh, <laughs> to this how do you point, handle? Not terrible. Uh, how do you handle promises that you made when you were running for election, and how do you handle? Uh, how do you handle it? I mean, what do you say to people? Do you uh, do you just? Uh, you know, I know people. Uh, People were wondering, you don't, you don't have it, okay. Well, I know even some of the people in your own party were very disappointed when you didn't close Gitmo. And I thought, uh, well, I think get, get, closing Gitmo, why close that? We've spent so much money on it. Uh, but uh, I thought maybe it's an excuse. Uh, oh, you, what do you mean, shut up? That's, okay. that's why they have improv troops. You don't have just improv solo acts. It's, it's so bad. Yeah, it it's just, so bad. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so bad. Like, in the, at one point in time, he says uh, I, about Mitt Romney, I can't tell him to go do that to himself. It's like a, a cheap joke yeah. that, that yeah. Obama was saying, tell Mitt to go fuck himself. Yeah. Like, it's, uh. it's so bad. It's, it's, he's, he's an 82 he's year old dude yeah. but it's ridiculous no one should have let him do that I know that shit's completely ridiculous it's the testosterone made him do it though yeah, it's a lack he of he rubbed some cream on his shoulders they should have got, 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 got somebody in, in black face back in the game. he said give me a gun bitch <laughs> oh is the show starting I'm assuming eventually he's telling you about to start it what's going on Irish for you we're gonna have uh what? Eat one of those things? Brian's gonna yeah, go I up. Yeah, I had some. Me too. I'm yeah, I went last night. I went camping last night. Where? Uh, um, Malibu Creek uh, State Park. Oh, dude, that's yeah. that's fucking crazy. What it are you doing awesome. camping near near cities? Uh, people, it's well, dangerous, it's out, man. Way on its own. Why is it dangerous? People are gonna jump in your camp, fucking jerk off on you while you're sleeping. <laughs> it's people patrolling. <laughs> They what do. campsites they are you patrol. going to? They patrol. They know where the tents are. Oh, that's big faggotry. It's real easy to get to. It's a quick drive. <laughs> big faggotry. Just big faggotry. Big faggotry. An afternoon <laughs> jaunt. Uh, they hide in the trees, <laughs> constantly pinching their dick while you're setting up your camp. That's how the oh, homosexual yeah. animal works. And they just Goes can't to wait. state What's parks. What's those parks where they hang out and they all suck dick at the parks and shit? Remember? Every goddamn park. Every park. You know really? what the excitement must With be? With Obama. When you're snoring and your mouth is open, they're 
And that's a mating call for the homosexual. Right in front of you, and they know that once they come on your face, you're going to wake up. Homosexual right is going to take advantage of any open orifice. Snort he away. He get a sexual urge. He can't help himself. You're getting sleep apnea and shit. That homosexual stop your sleep apnea by plugging any hole. But well, some people just like coming on Wrap tests. around you know your head saying? like a sloth on some a bowling ball. Off Fuck on a you. Tent that takes them to a different level. It's like eating out for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another plug. Waiting. <laughs> waiting. Waiting. <laughs> Splooge. <laughs> Run. <laughs> it just it takes a, win, a couple minutes for a guy to wake up and go, what the fuck is going on? What's it's a goddamn you? documented oh, scientific no. fact. Did what? I sneeze on my face? Did you just do on my arm? Oh, my God, there's fuck cum it. on my face. <laughs> it's got to be a horrible feeling it to cleans wake off. up in some fucking... Some guy's jerking off in your yeah, face? Or something. Well, it's yeah. better what than do you do? To it. What the fuck do you do? What do you do? You, you have deal to with it. You take the hit. That's why we live in gated communities. You take the hit, Joey. You go, hey... That wasn't nice. Is this why you say Get I shouldn't give out my, uh, my, my address? <laughs> fucking crazy, dog. 212 Van Dyke no, 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 Street, no, 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 Bisbee, uh -huh. Arizona, 85603. You mail shit to Bingo. Just address it to Bingo. She loves getting shit in the mail. <laughs> oh, I love it when she gets shit in the You're mail. You're crazy. Why would you give that out? Because it's fun to get shit in the mail. We live so far away. Oh, Anyone dude, crazy enough to come kill us, we they deserve could find it. You anyway. oh, it's stop. God's will. Oh, please. <laughs> Douglas, Douglas, Douglas. You're tempting fate. People can knock, knock on you. Eddie, door if you're and... listening to this podcast while you work the ice house, I could use one more uh, vodka soda with lemon, not a, lime. Uh, I don't think they it's have a live feed out there. Like that. They don't have a live feed yelling no. over the comedian on stage? <laughs> <laughs> what yet. kind of fucking <laughs> setup is this? What the fuck? That's next. <laughs> That's the next. We're going to put that in when the, we don't like the other shows. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Actually, we love the other shows. This is a great club, man. The, uh, the, the people who work here. They said I'm too dirty. I probably said that on the last what? podcast, which I blacked out. But this must have been a long time ago. Well, it was 90. They used to be like a January club. of 1996, and I still oh, harbor yeah. a resentment <laughs> against the building. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is, man? It that Christians was a different man. time. Yeah. I, and I, like, I wasn't a good comic. <laughs> yeah, that's. I struggled through a lot of like really shitty bookings in like the early '90s. I couldn't get booked anywhere. There was like a a long streak where everybody wanted like even get the improv. So many people hate the comedy store just because of something that happened one night twelve years ago. <laughs> well, it was it, that, but it was also early days. Always thought to yeah, be it gets dirty impressionable. Club. You always have some resentment. Like there's comics I knew that sucked, but I knew them when they were two years in, and now they're great. And you still have still can't see some it, right? part of your brain that goes, "Oh, they yeah. suck." Yeah, that we were just talking about a guy about like that recently, where I, I couldn't believe that everybody keeps telling me how awesome he is. I'm like, that's amazing. And, it, and I'm, I'm, it's not that I disbelieve. I totally, completely believe it. Just when someone didn't used to be good, it's hard to believe that they were. That's yeah. why the people where you were an open micer, they're the ones Joey who are going to respect you the they'll, least. They'll never respect yeah. you in the city you started in. Yeah. Dude, I didn't get headliner work in Boston until like a couple of years after moving out of there. You had to, uh, I had to work other places first. Uh, uh, some uh, comic is doing a, a blog of some sort about advice asked me and i never give advice if i can help it but what advice would you give to open micers leave get a bit of an act and then move somewhere else because when i moved from vegas as an open micer to phoenix now i'm known as a Somebody's comedian doing. from vegas that just moved to phoenix rather than uh, an open micer yeah uh, that's true but you know what the community in boston was so good if, if the community in Boston that existed in the 1980s was like that today, I swear to God I would move back. I would take the winter. I would take the winter just for the comedy community. It was fucking incredible. There was, there was 10 headliners. that were like national level, best comic ever level headliners, and they were all living in Boston, and they were all crushing every weekend at all these different clubs. There but was like four when I started, clubs. they said that like San Francisco and especially Boston were too – closed communities where you kind of had to be there. from there uh, or jumped into the gang but outsiders were not all you could get in if you were like someone's friend like if you're tony v's friend he could bring you in from san francisco or some shit like that you know if you were someone's friend gavin brought this guy in he's a good guy then you could get into the loop and there was guys that i did, I did that. an open mic and roger I rittenhouse Oh, yeah. Yeah, he came from Denver, and he broke into the Boston Loop completely. Oh, cool. He was a respected comic, a great writer. and you know. I did an open mic at Stitches when I was brand new and <laughs> ate my fucking dick <laughs> so hard. 
That's where I went on stage first, August 27th, 1988. Nice. Yeah. August 27th? Yeah. August yeah. 28th. Was, <laughs> that was my 22 years. It was 1990. I went up. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And McGuire, Chris McGuire, was real close to me, like within weeks, as was Greg Fitzsimmons. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know McGuire was that old dude, in the business. McGuire was a... Fu- he doesn't do stand-up anymore. Yeah, he's been writing. But, at all? Dude, he... No, he stopped doing no. stand-up. He, he really likes writing. And, you know, the, the, he was a really good stand-up. But he, uh, I think he felt like it was a lot of work, and he enjoyed writing on shows, you know? Yeah. And he got a bunch of good gigs. He got a good gig. He was with Mencia for a while. He wrote on that show. And, yeah. you know, he's, he's in the Comedy Central world now. Hey, let's he's plug a, our yeah, show he's a great guy. before we forget. Hi, guy. Yeah, End of the world 21st. show. End of the Mayan calendar. At the beginning of a new era. You told me End about of the this. Count. Yeah. Yeah, this was, was, gonna do a show this was the 20. night that we did mushrooms at the beginning of the war. <laughs> you were telling me on the drive. Yeah. About Terrence McKenna saying the end of the world, and I wrote, that was 2003. Yeah, you were yeah. telling me about it, and I, and I was thinking, oh wow, what if it is? And I couldn't imagine 2012 and 2003. Well, yeah, I couldn't imagine either. And and by the way, I never said it was the end of the world. What it's supposed to be is the end of an age, and the end of the long count of the Mayan calendar. You didn't tell. Been, you told me what. T- Terrence McKenna, McKenna wrote. I'm would, not saying would, you said this is what it's going to be the end of the no, world. No, no, but this was for McKenna people actually listening. didn't say the end of the world. What Kenneth, McKenna said was that would be um, some sort of a moment of ultimate novelty. And uh, I think that idea of ultimate novelty is akin to the Ray Kurzweil idea of the singularity. And it was either time travel or intelligent life comes to light and o- overcomes I us think or asteroid Terrence or- McKenna meant was the Wilter and theater in Los <laughs> Angeles 12 21 12 Joe Rogan Joey Coco Diaz the honey honey and uh, myself you're doing an end of the world yeah. show? Yes. Yeah. An Alpha the Brain. World. Don't forget and Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Brought to you by Alpha Brain. That's yeah. right. Brought to you by Alpha Brain. Yeah, we'll and totally Stan Hope Alpha Celebrity Brain Death Pool, which I'll come back and plug when that comes. Oh, hey, that's fucking, where's Red Band? He's gone. You're like the opposite of Dr. Drew. You're like a guy rooting for their failure. <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> failure. It, you're, you're a total reverse Dr. Drew. Like Dr. I, Drew is celebrity uh, rehab. He, he tried to like dress him back up, get him back out there, <laughs> clean him off, and you're good now. Good luck. Does anyone ever step in for a fucking extreme skier who's <laughs> risking his fucking life? Did you ever watch one of those guys that's in one of those wingsuits and one of them clips the fucking ground? Yeah, yeah. I saw that guy. 200 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. And just goes Hits the a, top of that ridge. Oh, jeez. I know, but that guy's they still go, like oh, a that guy, man, I, right? I've done bits about it, but why anyone who's risking their mm. life, if it's athletic, it's cool, where it's yeah. just as dangerous. Sure. Yeah. Well, I like to drink. I really enjoy drinking. So, but right. like, because I don't have good abs from it and a nice tan. They're not going to say it's a yeah, waste. Like your shit is way more fucking dangerous. Yeah, that guy's doing a crazy thing, that wing guy. You know, there's a bunch of them. They they jump off the side of the cliffs, giant cliffs, and they sail. And they're they're not far off the ground. And they have to know the terrain Racing because if they bikes. misjudge, they can Again, misjudge wow. like chunks because of, of rock. And you'll shit. know this yeah. if you're right. like into this. When when you check wiki deaths, yeah. all these European race car race motorcycle <laughs> people are dying like every day. We check oh in God. celebrity death pool, and you see all these people Who's that it? are dying. Who's got- yeah. Yeah. Hey, the best thing about it, it, it helps soften the blow. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> when a celebrity dies, you That's I, I got to ask Red Band. I need a favor. Actually, I'm going to pitch this to your audience. Okay. I, want, I want to make a, a reel for the thing. I need you to go. I a hate TMZ. For a reel for what? For our celebrity death pool, the site we're making. <laughs> if, oh, you're, you're really uh, going to ask like the a little crowd video? to yes. do this for you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. They'll make one. The well, no. A- actually, no. I want Red Band to do it. Because I don't want people. I don't want any hijack. I want a, a reel of just you asking a celebrity, "How do you feel?" Now, I don't want you to pestering them like TMZ. Oh, but God. I want a reel. That's so creepy. Feel. Come on, that's great. That's so <laughs> creepy. Just how do you feel? <laughs> yeah, Fucking, no, do, no, no. Do you you're, think you're Joey people. Coco Diaz, who's <laughs> laughing your his balls out, are gonna find old people? 
<laughs> your people are going to find really old people. <laughs> it's and just, how do you feel? Yeah, just, they're going to freak those people yeah. out. <laughs> All right, how about just, how are you doing? Yeah, All right, not cancer. how do you feel. How you doing? And just, yeah. <laughs> oh, how rude. <laughs> Joey Coco Diaz. Bingo <laughs> has Joey Coco Diaz uh, on her list for this year. Luck. Really? He's going to outlive I have, I, have, I have Ralphie May. And uh, I had one. Joey's going to outlive the pyramids. Everybody I told I was in a pool with you, they said, uh, can you pick Stanhope? And I was like, special yes. role. Only yeah. Stanhope can pick Stanhope. No, no. Wasn't that not... a role in there? No. No, no. no. How could you have a role only, like that? I, no, you, uh, I'm the only one who can pick myself because I'm the only celebrity in it is what Joby was saying. Uh, uh, I get it. So he didn't know of your celebrity status. Oh. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yo, so Ari's got some celebrity polls right season now, this weekend, Tarzan? Yeah, it's oh, yeah. time of the year. <laughs> yeah, no. You see what happened up in Penn State this week? No. They changed the music at the stadium. Did you yeah. hear about that? They're fucking Sweet silly. Caroline. It's too too touchy-feely. Touch They're like, me. we can't hear that too shit. Too touchy-feely? Yeah, the one line, you know, touching you, touching me. You can't have <laughs> <laughs> So, like, there's no it's touching in Pennsylvania. They said, they said like it had nothing to do with it, but like of course they got, it does. Like, People they will pay millions to a marketing firm to I change their whole like fucking done, everything. Man. Like go in no and one change. Will ever if you trust see a them. kid's eyebrow, change it. Like anything you fucking <laughs> see. But the best is they're gonna put stickers to commemorate the fucking kids on the helmets. Oh my what are you going to put a kid, a fucking Why kid Why are you going to out the kids? <laughs> what are you going to do, like a kid with his mouth open yelling with Luca? Luca. Because Luca's got to be beating kids by this point. So, <laughs> right? So, so, yeah, Luca was getting you know, beat up 20 yeah, it years ago. To you, you by bro, now, you, Luca's got to be smacking the you know, fuck out of kids. It happened to me. That's so ridiculous. Where is Sandusky? Nobody's even mentioned him, dog. He's in Australia jumping up and down. Yeah, he's Jumping in prison. Down. He's in jail. For the rest of his life. Yeah, he's That's convicted, funny. Joey. He was convicted on a bunch of I know of he was convicted, things. but we yeah. hadn't heard from him all summer. I want details daily. Oh, man. Who's <laughs> fucking him in the ass? Who's bit slapping him? Well, have they sentenced him? They no, just no they not yet. That's going to be. Isn't that, that, is, that weird? They're deciding they whether or not to call it violent crimes or not. Like, like as if it matters now. Yeah, if it, it it's, doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's violent if you force someone to do it, period. There's either implied violence or Do you think prison violence? guards aren't the biggest football fans in the worst way that they're not going to smuggle little kids? <laughs> oh, 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 you son of a bitch. <laughs> Listen, Jerry, you know, hey, you know, everyone has their thing, and I was a big fan. <laughs> Listen, man, Penn State, I, I got a tattoo on my calf. Up, Penn I State till I die. I'm going to treat it like a rap together. You understand me? So I understand. I'm going to treat it like a rap star who kills. Ugh. They're going to put him under the fucking prison. It's sad, They'll last man. a year with a camera. They'll cut that bill of funding. It's yeah, sad, and Somebody's going to fucking stab him a thousand times. It's, it's going to be really it's, sad. It's just such a terrible, terrible testimony of to what human beings are possible that they let that go on, that they knew that this guy was a pedo, and they let him do that for so long. It's so yeah. sad. It's so horrible. It's it's horrifying, but it's so sad that that somehow. But it's that, also that people are sad that. that that guy has a fucking mental illness, Fuck and yeah. that's his fucking oh, it's payback. The worst one to get. Is, yeah. Oh, you go to prison and get fucking stabbed. Yeah. Like, well, well, he's ruining p people, and a lot of I those know, people in but he prison can't help it. were ruined. So that's why there's so much anger. Right, like and the vampire. prison system yeah. itself doesn't work on every fucking level. But that goes down. No, it doesn't. But you know, when people want to talk about street justice and like, you know, oh well, you know, that's one thing. They're noble in the joint. No, it's not that they're noble. It's that they recognize that they were most likely abused somehow or another as a child as well. There's a giant percentage of kids that are in bad situations or abused as children. So when yeah, when a kid fucker goes in there they remember what made them who they are really just getting raised fucked up you know, that's for the most part having horrible things happening when you're a child yeah but yeah you don't treat fucking mental illness with fucking that you, you should of, you should yeah. put them down they can't fix that shit you can't He's 60 it. something years old yeah. He's 60 something. What the are they going to do? Life in fucking prison? The re recidivism gonna... rate is super, super high. You got to put them away. You got to put them, put them away, or you have to kill them. There's There's a, a special you cannot somewhere. risk them in general population. That's what we decided as a society, yeah. right? Like, well, that's, is... that's uh, if, there, if there were two things I could figure out where I have bits with no solution, where I yell about the problem, would be the prison system, including, you know, mentally ill and uh, also Pedophilia. something else we talked Pedophiles? about. Pedophiles? Yeah, well, no, yeah. that included in that. The right. fucking prison system for everyone doesn't work. It just makes 
more it's, horrible people. A third of oh, it you were was, abused listen, as a kid. Is a that why this it, happened to you? They're just putting you mental health people. A third of the prison population is mental health people that they don't know what the fuck. No, to the do other with. one, would be the the rehab system. They don't know system, what the fuck. That to would do be with. the other one. And I've always, I don't, I, I might have talked about it last time I was here when I was fucked up. Is I've always thought about doing the Joe Rogan detox, where you do DMT, you fucking yeah. exercise, like just other. Other different thing, yeah. Because yeah, what they're yeah. doing doesn't housing, work. It's just warehouse. You just need a. Sometimes people just need a reset, That's and you, you're really not going to get that reset from a regular everyday experience or a higher power. No, you you yeah, need. You, you, well, look, you, you. Maybe look. What, regardless of what happens to you when you die, what's capable of happening right now is a transcendent experience. It's capable. You can do it. If you decide to do it, you can do it. Like, that's available. You can't. So it almost negates, like, stop worrying about what you can't worry about and just figure out what the, the connection to you God is on and get jet through ski? mushrooms. You ever been on a jet ski? No. Yeah, they're awesome. You ever go, oh, God damn it, I need a cigarette or a drink? <laughs> <Huh>. No. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. take that. And, like, how do you make that a 24-hour experience where you're right. doing shit where right. you're like, all right, I don't need that right, about now. It right now. Yeah, a roller coaster. You never say, hey, stop, I need a cocktail. I need a bump. I'm on a roller coaster. You do it. Like, I want to expand that like frame of mind into... Anyway, this goes well, nowhere past that. But or that's... I no, I mean, look, it, it, the, what, the, the fascination that you have with stand-up, you know, the fascination that you have with creating material, you could have had with anything in your life. You know, it's just that this lifestyle of drinking and boozing and smoking cigarettes and not giving a fuck. But it, I it enjoy fall, it. I'm I know talking about people who want to get out of it. But what I'm saying is yours falls right in. It's like, you know, the, the way you live is like you're, you're, you're putting so much energy into doing it exactly the way of like a real stand-up comic. And if you wanted to clean yourself up and you wanted to like – get rid of the booze and get rid of the cigarettes, you would have to figure out how to keep the I don't give a fuck while you're clearly demonstrating that you give a fuck. Because part of what's really funny is not giving a fuck. Part of what's really funny is having that pass where you could say, look, man, I don't give a fuck. I don't meteors come down. I don't give a fuck. And then you drink and then, you know, you bump knuckles and everybody does shots. <laughs> the, the real key is how do you do that and, and actually just be in a normal state of consciousness? Is it possible to get that happy? Is it possible to get that loose and free? But I'm, I, I'm, not, necess I'm not necessarily happy on any level. <laughs> but I, I don't see sobriety as something that would make me happier. happier. Yeah. Right. Ron, like White, Ron, Ron White is a great well. example of someone who is really fucking happy and still a yes. drunk and a smoker. Yeah. No, no. It, it, functioning. That guy's fucking Thriving. great at yeah. it. Yeah. Thriving. Thriving. That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Enter that fucking everyone tweet thriving alcoholic, thriving alcoholic as yeah. opposed yeah. to functioning out. Yeah. Get that into the lexicon of American fucking vocabulary. A thriving... A Hedberg is a, a, another example. Uh -huh. I made some reference to it on the special where he really fucking enjoyed what he did. He was never a guy like Geraldo that was a revolving door, rehab, drunk, rehab, drugs, rehab... He, no, fucking Hedberg enjoyed what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. You can have experiences through you know chemicals you know that are really enjoyable, and to pretend that they're not is so stupid. People would to say the same thing to you as much as you do ground game and fucking hump and thump or whatever you do in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> they'd go, oh well, he's a, I, what would Doctor Drew say to you? That would be a fucking fascinating conversation. Because everyone's terrified of fucking saying anything about Rogan to Rogan's face, <laughs> including me. What would Do would Doctor Drew oh, sit down and go? Like well, Dr. you're masking Drew. things with your marijuana use. Marijuana is yeah, a thing. Yeah, when people say that, so I think he would. Uh, he He'd would agree. Yes. He would agree to disagree. He's a strong dude when it comes to like uh, debating opinions on things, and he doesn't really uh, fuck with what you like or want to do as long as he doesn't legitimately feel that it's harming yourself like you're sabotaging your life in any other ways which i'm not but he all right what would he but, say but behind your I back say, but here's what i say <laughs> yeah. he doesn't yeah. respect it this is my my opinion he doesn't respect the idea of marijuana or any entheogens whether it's mushrooms or dmt or anything even yoga 
I don't think he respects the idea of altered states of consciousness to advance you as a human. And I think that that's where there's doing a big disservice because he hasn't had those humbling psychedelic experiences. Because if he did, for sure, he would be talking the same way Feynman did about it or the same way McKenna did about it or the same way a lot of brilliant people did when they had crazy psychedelic experiences. They would talk about it in a, in a very humble way. And, you know. We took uh, MDMA and mushrooms last night. That's a really good combination. Well, you know, not for everybody, but for you, yes, you can handle that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has to kind of understand that there's people out there that not only are they able to handle certain chemicals, but they're able to thrive on them, and they're able to enjoy they their time. They discount individual experience yeah. and individual yeah. Yeah. knowledge. Yes. Yes, yeah, some people This is the way it should be done for everyone. sugar. It's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. don't. You know, Mark Twain said it best that he said censorship is like telling a man that he can't have a steak because a baby can't chew it. Well, that I did that first. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Twain was a bad motherfucker. He had figured out a lot of stupid shit people before people get, even had cars. People get fucked up. What is for wrong years. with this fucking Sucking. terrible? I've been trying. Not really That's it right there. It's the sweet spot. I already have a seahorse posture, and it's Bingo. getting worse trying to lean into this fucking. These microphone. chairs suck. We need new chairs. No, it's this. I've been trying yeah. to work this microphone where I'm I'm sliding underneath it. But these chairs do suck. If anybody has a recommendation on one of the most comfortable office chairs, holla at me. I need to find out. No, it's not the chair. It's the mic stand. It's I've already I have too. twisted this fucking the thing mic around stands every which way. But mic stands are better than those stupid arms. Those were retarded. Those were bad. Yeah. Those big fucking cranky, squeaky you ass robot quite, arms. You quite get it. You know, like, yeah, and plus, when the singularity happens and those things come to life, do you really want that kind of <laughs> nonsense in your life? No. Fuck those robots. I want a you Star Wars helmet with a microphone inside it so I don't see my head in the monitors. You're going to have Google <laughs> goggles, son, very shortly. Google goggles. I heard you talking about that. Within a year. You're going to have glasses on like Ari's, and in the corner, you're going to be able to read emails. You're going to get turn-by-turn -turn navigation if you're walking or driving. God damn, son, are you listening to me? That's yeah. cool. crazy shit. And I'm gonna be fucking glasses. I'm gonna be walking over to your house with my uh, the GPS that's in front of your eye, and I'm going. I can't really read it. I need reading glasses. And you go, don't you have Google goggles yet? You only have the GPS that sits in front of your one eye. I'm always I'm always like uh, three steps behind Joe Rogan. Yeah. Like I just started texting in the last two years. You gotta sell that crazy <laughs> house. Yeah. Sell that crazy house and come back to that place I that you had in Venice. I fucking love it. I love being in a town. Do you have friends out there? I, yeah. Painting that and they're you had. normal people. Comedy never comes up. Yeah. I talked to neighbor Dave about his disability and shit. It's fucking great. <laughs> Regular shit like, Just being a normal guy because I do still. I'm still on the road. I have enough of this life. Where it's, but it's balanced with, I want to be like my dad. I'd be a nice fucking guy. My neighbors, bingo, locked the fucking dogs in the car accidentally without a spare set of keys in the hot Arizona sun in the middle uh -huh. of the day. And I ran, she's like, I, don't, I just like, and yeah, you, they don't have a lot of time. And we don't, there's another spare set of keys uh, two blocks away, and we don't have, and the neighbor came out, saw us panicking. I was about to smash out the window of the car, and yeah. A nice neighbor. Do you know what that's like? A nice uh -huh. neighbor. They're Christians and they're nice and they're friendly and we wave in the morning and they help you. You wave it. You know how black people wave at each other because uh -huh. they're black and they don't know each other. That's what you do in a town of 6,000 people. You wave at someone you don't know because they're there too. <laughs> it's uh, fucking that's great. Nice. I that's really nice. enjoy it. Yeah, and I'm there's boring. Something nice about that. What's up, Joe so, Diaz? <laughs> What's up, Joe Diaz? We'll go get some man. When are you going on stage? <laughs> Soon. Soonish. Are you going on before Ari? <laughs> yeah, no, Ari. Ari, and then, and who's on right now? I bet it's real sharp down there. Right. Red really band's know. on. It's How's what? the crowd in there, Tony? You're like in the fucking. You're like where yeah? police would. Uh, wasn't the man? Really? Like, Holy you're shit! In the town of the good, uh -huh. the bad, the Holy ugly. Shit! I'm scared. Yeah, no you know one gives a fuck, fuck what I do. Yeah, fuck, no, it's man. no like. Uh, the guy next door is Yeah, your set yeah. wasn't as good as last uh -huh. year. Yeah, no, fuck that. And they don't mind that you're a hippie. Yeah, people that will like you. Would you say that you're a hippie? They don't mind. He's in the artist community. Oh, oh, no, okay. no, it's like half hippie, half redneck, okay. so it's balanced. I live in the like old kind of churchy section. Oh, wow. Do you have like deer running through your town? We, li I, I, uh, I, have, I bought another house. Uh, you bought a second pimp house to store your what? bitches? It's just a way. It's a long story. Okay, no worries. It's, uh -huh. it's like four blocks away. You bought two houses? Well, it's okay. three. You but, bought three houses yeah, in the community? <clears throat> So yeah, you rent them out like and they're shit? all like within, you know, trying to take four over blocks. the town, trying to own it. 
Well, is this like New Jack City? Kind of. The Bisbee of. edition? <laughs> <laughs> Point is, though, where, where we're staying now is like right at the, like, the last place. And the over the hill is Mexico. And the coyotes Whoa. are really bad. So I can't have my cats there because the coyotes will eat the cats. Right. So I have one house for the cats. It's cheap as shit. And I don't have kids. You have I a can house blow. just for your cats? <clears throat> well, How many I'm, cats do you have, man? Two. You moved two cats into uh, No, I'm house? saying I moved the dogs over there. They can take coyotes, but the cats can't. I don't know how this gets started. <laughs> wow. Um, there's moved. that many coyotes out there, huh? It's a big, big issue. Well, I'm, where I am is right at the border of where it's there's the nothing. It's a real fucking deal. Yeah. You know, this is like, real. You but know what? They, there's two, there's two blocks over, there. where, but coyotes up. are right at my... Like that's the hill over to nothing for seven miles to Mexico of desert, and that's where the coyotes Coyote will sneak. Which huh? which one is in Africa, a leopard or a jaguar? Uh, Whatever the one is, uh, I both. think I think South America it's a jaguar. I think, yeah. is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, they've they've spotted those in Arizona, man. There was a show called Monster Quest. And they, they come took, out of the toilet. They the could, albino no, ones. No, no, no. I'm no, sorry. No, I, no, I no. mixed These up my These are big, giant, 200-pound cats. <laughs> These aren't urban myths. How dare you? <laughs> there was a show called Monster Quest. I love this show because they never found shit. They, they wrote me in every week and never found a fucking We were just talking monster. about this. All this you, exactly. Where you're wrong. Oh, nothing good. again. Could well, this be do. proof of Sasquatch? Like, and it, you go, you watch forty-five minutes and go, "Well, I would have seen it on the news. I wouldn't have yeah. had to wait for them to produce this." But <laughs> what it, what they did do though is catch a jaguar. They did see a jaguar on camera, on on game camera, in a ranch in Arizona. So this thing had come up through Mexico. So they have game cameras through a toilet, <laughs> just over the Sorry. border. <laughs> 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 You're, Come uh, and take your all dogs your, might get eaten by They're jaguars, taking all the bobcats jobs. You're going to eat your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we heard these coyotes kill a skunk last night. Oh, that's, that's so great. gross. They all start howling. Oh, they probably got it right oh. in the face. They probably were too hungry. They couldn't deal with it. They had to just deal with it. They'd well, you live up there yet. Yeah, have you head. had your dog skunked yet? No, no. My dogs are pretty smart. You know, they bark a lot, and they don't want to have nothing to do with skunks. You know, they see skunks, they back up and bark and Jesus. like jump back and bark. It's the worst thing Well, in the to world. us, it's horrible. You know, what we have to understand is to like a dog, it's a weird thing what skunks have. They have a, a smell that's so potent that you can be in your car and the parts per million that are in the atmosphere can be infinitesimal, but you can pick it up. So as you're driving through an area where a a skunk could have got Miles. bitten by a dog, yeah, blocks and blocks away. But you smell it through the... That's how a dog is with everything. That's how bloodhounds work. But that's what they say about the dog's hearing. They're hearing. They're yeah. so alert. Like, so what is it for a dog when someone oh. pulls up next to him blaring fucking hip-hop oh. to the point where you want to be carrying a gun? Like, why is a dog not going, fuck? I'll fucking kill you with well, that Well, I bet shit. a really I aggressive your... dogs probably would. You know, I bet like a really aggressive dog would start barking at that. I would. You, you'd like think, a German Shepherd you'd or a Rottweiler think that Rottweiler just from that moment of hate because of that car, a dog would have learned to say the word nigger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So somewhere, I don't know about somewhere, it. I'm just saying evolution might be a flawed theory. Oh. Douglas. <laughs> Douglas, Douglas, Douglas. This show will now be red flagged. And I have to insert in my own opinion, which I am horrified. <laughs> I, I am surprised. I am taken aback that my, my former partner on The Man Show would choose to just so flippantly use really incredibly insensitive language uh, and attribute it to dogs... And that someone who's playing loud music must be unbelievable. That's whatever. It you know, is. I'm Bad. I'm gonna apologize publicly. <laughs> I was ashamed of my comments. I was led astray by the uh, the lures of alcohol and other vices <laughs> that this place carries. And uh, if there's anyone that's upset by my comments. Mail your comments to 212 Van Dyke Street, <laughs> Bisbee, Arizona, 85603. It's right on the corner of Hotson. It's on a back broken road in a hovel, hobbled neighbor, neighborhood. I gave an interview today where I was talking to some guy about um, uh, doing, uh, doing the man show, like what it was like. And uh, 
what it's like uh, to be uh, friends with you. And I brought up something <coughs> that you said that you think you could quit comedy, but you couldn't quit comics. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's what I miss the most about being in Bisbee. And that's where, yeah. when you were saying, hey, these, these, there's moments, you got to be here. There's moments yeah. in life. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't give a shit about the show or the audience, but I fucking but you really should. miss They're hanging fun. out with comics. Yeah, I do too. But the, sh the audiences are fun, man. Oh, it's, yeah, it's I'm not part of the whole I'm not shebang. terrified of doing a show. Don't, you don't have to... <laughs> Walk me up. No, like I'm not. Fucking... I'm not saying that. I'm saying like you should cherish it all, man. We're the luckiest motherfuckers on earth. We're... But I also cherish not Doing sitting it. in traffic. Right. right that right, was right. my biggest problem in L.A. And it's like a real thing. I fucking hated traffic when I moved to Playa del Rey, where I'm right by the airport. I go. I'll never live anywhere in L.A. again except right next to the fucking airport in a quiet community, Playa del Rey no one even knows about it right right uh and the uh, when i get off that plane the idea of sitting in traffic on friday night thank god the show is late yeah and we got here quick but yeah it's terrifying yeah it's retarded it's the idea is silly it's like just, how long did you sit in traffic ridiculous. on the way back from doing tosh because that was that was a long traffic. time it was a long time it was really did hard. you go home first yeah i went straight home yeah it took at least an hour and a half and then how that long time, from there 4:30. here? Uh, not that long. Maybe half an hour, 40 minutes at the most. Not bad. That's, that's not bad. That's just... Yeah. And going there... Yeah. You just, that's I like just accept four it. Some, but when I'm in my car, I think about shit. I make phone calls, and I listen to books on tape. I listen to uh, lectures. I do. Yeah. I listen I, to lectures. That I changed the lectures. road for me in the day when I was doing all those triple gigs where on the road meant eight hours between yeah. Twin Falls, Idaho. There's no stoplights or traffic. You can sit there. But to try to listen to a book on tape and oh, yeah. not get sideswiped and cut in lanes, and I couldn't do that. Oh, really? The uh, book on tape would be too enthralling and yeah. suck you in too much? No, no, I'd not listen to the book on tape because I'm too worried about not dying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, you must be a better driver. Uh, well, I'm <laughs> listening to lectures more than books on tape. Maybe lectures are easier to follow because it's so, a, sort of a straightforward conversation, whereas books on tape, you know, you got to like, okay, so this was the dad, and the dad did, <laughs> and, the, and then they're buried in this graveyard, and, you know, I mean, there's too Either way, I only listen to talk anyway. I almost yeah. never yeah. listen to music unless I'm really, tr like, tripping doing drugs I like really listen. drunk. You don't like music, though, which I always thought was the weirdest thing ever. I like what I like, but I'm not interested in finding new stuff. If I'm in the mood for music, I have a catalog of 45 years. And you're that, done. You've yeah, got enough. i got like 350 songs on my iPod. Yeah. Well, as I get older, I find myself over and over again going to 70s rock. That's all I give a fuck about. All I give a fuck about is like Jimi Hendrix and Zeppelin and I, I want to do a bit about Alman this, Brothers. but you know where I've found the most new music over the past, say, five to seven years is embarrassingly commercials. Really? Like, uh, like uh, there's I have three on my uh, iPod from iPod commercials. Right? I'm like, that's really catchy. There's a Heineken commercial that I got this weird, like, '60s music. Uh, Jean Pena Hunchav by some weird fucking from a Heineken commercial. I'm like, that's really catchy. I like that. It's from some surf movie from the 60s. Oh, wow. That's and so it's bizarre. Some Filipino band. It's like really weird. But Whoa. I don't listen to like top 40 radio. I, you know what I listen to when I, <clears throat> when I write? I listen to foreign music. I used to uh, listen to like some classical, but every now and then classical would have a classical music song with a vocalist, which is the most retarded shit of all time. It's the worst. And it, this is what I did because uh, to write, I'd lo I love music when I write, but I don't like lyrics because I don't want fucking yeah. words. Yeah. I, I downloaded because I love the whole genre, uh, but I don't know the artist. So I downloaded the complete works of Duke Ellington and Count Basie. Uh. And uh, there's a few that have vocals, but for the most part, it's just and it's yeah. fucking great nice happy fucking upbeat swing jazz music right but no and it's, it's perfect background did music. you ever pretend to like like charlie parker or i, I don't know like I, <laughs> again i like what i i'd put on the on the tv had the big band swing music and when i saw artists that were no vocals that were the shit i like to hear i wrote it down 
And I'm like, all right, it's enough Count Basie Duke Ellington that I can get their complete works and put that on a fucking, what do you, playlist on my iPod, and that's good. Hey, what was that one guy, Thelonious Monk? Is that, was, his, was that the guy's name? That's a name? guy, yeah. I don't... Another uh, jazz musician, right? He was like the coolest guy in the world to be a fan of. He, had, he was a black guy, he was a jazz musician, and he had that name. If you said that you were like fans with Thelonious Monk, you were automatically like the most interesting guy of all time. I would <laughs> automatically like bump you up. Like I found a comic had that in his car. He was listening to Thelonious Monk on a cassette. I was like, this dude is intellectual as fuck. I remember just thinking that, like, immediately, like, wow. Do you think the most interesting guy in the world, that guy that plays that character, has, like, a contract? Like, you have to, you can't go to Pinkberry. You have to only go to yeah, Abercrombie. You have to go to, like, the, the top plate. The you know what guy? I mean? Yeah, like, no. like, he has, like, some weird, like, because he Bingo. can't be photographer yeah. photoed no. in, like, a Target what's or something. The whataholics? No. You don't think? No. Brat. Brat. What's that? We, we just played New Orleans, and her friend, I, the last time I got a fucking legitimate boner, Whoa. <laughs> we saw her friend, the, the Brassaholics, did this fucking, like, hardcore brass swing, like, New Orleans, but fucking, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta go, it's her friend, it's at, like you, yeah, she had a fucking hardcore timeshare <laughs> sell me into going, because it's after the show, I'm all done with the handshakes. It was the most fucking incredible experience in New Orleans. The really? Brassaholics, just full heart. Like, we're Talk to Joey Diaz. I got to piss. I'll be right back. I got to piss badly. Take your time, but hurry up. We're taking a breather here for a Wait. second. That's yeah. why I breather. Thank God. Let's fucking, talk about Joe the, fucking Rogan behind his back for one second. You fucking little stem or nothing. I'm, you leave me all No, room. no. I'm here like a soldier. Come on. You gave up Coke? Give me a bump. I got nothing. I know, but someone just palmed you something. And you're like, ah, no, I, I gave it up. I'm nobody, kidding. I'm fine. I'm, I'm kidding. Me a bump. It's the weirdest thing. I got some boom boom juice. People offer it to me after no. the show, and I'm like, I don't want it after the show. I have to go on stage. I mean, wild. Like, no, I have a bump. No, no, no. Well, yeah, you probably don't talk to people. In the fucking butter container in my refrigerator for the last month. Like, I gotta get them out of the house. I don't want them around no more. Because I eat them at midnight by myself. Before <laughs> Sons of Anarchy or something. Do you, are you still with a chick? I'm still with the chick. I'm a sad. Look at Bingo with the fucking hairdo. I like it. <laughs> Jesus, look at how much <laughs> I smoked. <laughs> We're gonna need that's cigarettes. Like that's that's a really cool color of hair. You're like Trump of Bisbee. Look at you. <laughs> you know who you remind me of? You remind me of Ula La. Do you ever play uh, here, her? No. Yeah, I Google got a, I get a house for 59 grand. Like it's not like oh he's got a bunch of yeah you can buy shit for nothing there. Nothing. And I don't have like I could get investments and they go, hey, you know what? Let's just move over there. Investments. <laughs> Who stays at the big house? The that 59 business. grand. You it would. For a lot of people in L.A., that's a year or two worth of rent. So now let me ask you this: What happened at thirteen thirteen Mockingbird Lane, the original Bisbee? What happened? Who's at the the compound? Oh yeah, we still have it. Oh, I know you We're have like it. back Who and forth. Like, lives at the compound, Doug. No that's one. The, the cats. Are you I, serious? But I, mean, I put the dogs over there when we're on the road because I have my friend who's a house sitter, and then we have okay, another place. I see you. But he's, it's all he's fenced basically in. starting a colony, and he's just trying to do it on a sneak tip with dogs and cats living in his house and shit. What's <laughs> <laughs> the fuck he's doing? I know what he's doing. He's always referencing Hunter S. Thompson. He's a part of the divine plan, and he just wants to start an art, a, a, a legit colony out there. So when the shit cats. hits the fan, they're gonna eat coyotes, and uh, they're gonna what get cats. their water. It was really weird because what, I what got Joe the water Rogan out of the river. Pays a car service to be on tap <laughs> for a year is probably what I paid for two of the houses. <laughs> so, yeah, I bet it's it's yeah, the, I, uh, that cave was a good price. The cave uh, in Bisbee, and that's a cave for that's sale. That's a, a, like a million, right? Yeah, it's a fucking incredible house. It's a fucking cave, Joe Diaz. Like they built a house inside a cave. It's incredible. I was I looked at it. I'm like, this is where I would live. Like 100, percent I would want to live there. It's the coolest fucking house. The, in the, the, the world. first house I bought was before so the housing up, prices right? crashed. Trulia. That was 140. Go to Trulia. They have the T R U L I A. <clears throat> It's a good real estate website. Yeah, someone buy the cave, god damn it. Yeah, the cave it's is so dope. fucking cool. Someone badass. cool buy it. But uh, if I lived uh, somewhere, if I could choose, especially if I was a single man with no children, which is never going to happen. So it's just fictional. But if I was, I would, I would, uh, I would try that cave just because it seems like it's calling me. Like that would be the coolest shit of all time. You live in a fucking cave. Yeah. I saw a crazy But where would one. you go to get, do a set? 
How yeah. long could you go with? How? What's the longest you've gone without doing a set? It's been a month when I've been uh, like injured. Is this it? Having surgery or something like that, like my nose surgery. I went like a month. I lived without. in Woody Creek. I lived in Snow Mass Village. Yeah, maybe but see if they have pictures of the inside of it. Hunter S. Thompson lived. Part of it is like inside the yeah. cave. Go to Woody Creek oh, yeah. Tavern. Look at that. That's his fucking cop. house, man. Yeah, this like dude's inside block. a cave. Look at this shit. It's badass. That's so nuts. Uh. Yeah, it's been on a bunch of shows. Yeah, it's like Weird it's a houses. real visual. The visual of it cut into the mountainside is pretty bizarre, dude. Too. How long has it been for sale? Since I lived in Bisbee, so at least seven years. And nobody will buy it for this. Got to be. A well, it's way. it's hard to you look at if nobody would buy it. That means if you buy it, good luck selling it. It's like you got to look at real estate now totally different than people looked at real estate just 10, 20 years ago. 10, 20 years ago, real estate was thought of it as an. You have to want to live. You know, uh, yeah, an hour and a half from the closest airport and that small market airport. Yeah. You're that far from a city and you're not even close to town. That's outside of Bisbee. It's not like you can, you know, and you're, I'm sure it's some kind of dirt road to get to the road that gets to the actual town of Bisbee. Yeah, and guess what? If you hear hills. a car in the middle of the night and then it shuts off about 100 Sir? yards down the road. Eddie? One more bad one. Eddie, uh, yeah, can I get savage. lemon instead of lime? Sure. Thanks. I need to change up. I know you're not supposed to mix. Eddie, how long? How much longer are you here, man? Uh, you're not supposed to mix lemon and lime. Five minutes, okay. Well, Isn't that the secret to seven, cocktails. seven up? Or? Okay. No. You're not supposed to mix cocktails. Do you, do you but, believe um, in that? I don't really believe in that anymore. No, that was the that no. was that was. I was being sarcastic. I'm having vodka soda with lemon instead uh, of lime. Right? It right. just makes you look like you're crazy and you're trying to. Drink People everything. say that oh, you don't mix because that means they drank more than they normally did. So they drank what their fill was, and then they had oh, a, oh, a shooter, oh, a tutor, oh, I'll have a whiskey. Uh, yeah, that's because they drank too much regardless, is my theory. Powerful Doug Stanhope dropping knowledge on drunks, letting bitches know what time it is. <laughs> Since the 80s, is hooker. It, is it traffic and weather together at the top of the hour? Since the <laughs> 80s, hooker. Doug, do you still get hangovers? Uh, Well, I feel like shit in the morning. Yeah. So Every you know, day. If you take the alpha brains of the cocktail at night, you'll be super duper in the morning. <laughs> you just wake up, put your cape on, and you're ready. But there are nights where I consider, like, a, if you only had, like, six or eight drinks the night before, that's, oh, I didn't really drink. And you feel way better. But I, I have quit smoking for periods of time where you feel great just not smoking. And you, you don't realize how much smoking cigarettes contributes to how much you feel like shit in the morning. So... Yeah, that's just not good for you, son. Yeah, I, I, I was feeling bad for the sound. My lungs gurgle so badly now regularly e. that when the sound man today at Tosh put the <laughs> microphone right on my chest, on your breastbone instead of on your shirt or your lapel, I'm like, oh, it. they're going to have audio <laughs> issues. Because <laughs> no one else can hear it, but you put them on. <laughs> oh, dude. So I thought, I thought that was Joey Diaz naturally. It's you doing. <laughs> so how much are you still smoking at all? Yeah. I'm how smoking. much are you smoking? Uh, well, tonight I'm smoked over half a fucking pack right here. <laughs> wow. And is it uh, when you're smoking, do you feel it in that lung where it's gurgling? Does it like do something? Uh, <laughs> does it yeah, no, quench the gurgling at all? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's fucking wet all the time. That's just phlegm. It's like you're really into ice cream. Yeah. If you were really into, like, dairy, it's probably <laughs> yeah. pretty much the same. All this talk of cigarettes, yeah. it makes me want to smoke one. Oh, are you are you still on the <laughs> e-cigarette? Or you no, no, I gave up on that. Oh, okay. And then I started spitting out blood. And, Joey, how can you I was smoke? about to say someone told me that that happened, and it was you. Yeah. Joey, how come, how come you can do one, at, like, every blue moon? You can do one whenever you want. How many blue moons do we have? The same way I can do a bump every <laughs> fucking blue moon. Dude, keep it on the DL. I'm trying to work it in slow over here, bro. You're getting all, you're getting all crazy on me, man. Do you know the last night was a blue moon? That's what, he said. what does that mean? That means uh, that there's two moons in one month. You're gonna tell. You're gonna really? give me. Hang on, wait. You're gonna wow. give me some fucking wow. notice Powerful before I, I. I can't go right from here to stage. I gotta figure. I fuck it. I don't have to figure out what I'm gonna say. Yeah, you're up. Let bitches know what time it is, Joe Diaz. Let those bitches know what time it is, Joe Diaz. Okay. Yeah, you have about 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. So when he start, was, was Ari on stage right now? I think so. Um, I understand this is the greatest crowd in the history of the universe. It's really good. Really good crowd. Fun crowd. 
Yeah, Tony said it's the greatest one ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the powerful, powerful dog stand up. Good yeah. goodness. Yeah, other than that, man, I, I completely agree with you that uh, living in um, a more quiet community is healthier for the mind. I think that, especially for a guy like you or I, where you're always doing shows, and you always have just big groups of people staring back at you, like you want the exact opposite to sort of balance things out. It's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. rarely does it, people go, oh, you're back from the road. How was it? Good. Mm -hmm. How's things at Safeway? Well, you know, they still, the girl, the new hire, I can't keep any new hires, and she cut part of her finger off with the uh, fucking slicer in the deli. And, and you love it, too, because it but keeps But I'm, I'm aware of it. There's constant people in my life. Yeah, constant normal Thanks. people. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something that you're not going to get in other stretches of life out here trying to do the... Uh... I'm going to be doing comedy anyway, so it's not like I'll never see comics, that that part of my life is gone. Yeah. I miss them, and I know that my... Thanks, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Else to, to come in here? Eddie? Yeah, sure. Eddie, you're gone? Yeah, Eddie's Please got hold. a bail. Well, hang on. Powerful Eddie. Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Here. Douglas has extra money that he has to get rid of, man. It's very important. All right, bro. Take it easy, man. Yeah, um, when we, we were saying earlier, like this place, everybody who works here is so nice. It's like the, one of the nicest clubs in the history of the world. And before we were coming around, you know, they, they had never had anything like this before. They never had a podcast done here. They never had, you know, these wild fucking who shows. Who ran it? Who was, what was the name? The man's name? Bob Fisher? I thought it was a woman hmm. that booked it like yes. in the 90s. Yeah. Was it a lane or something? Or yeah, I think it was a lane from the ice house. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. Is that right? Anyway, I don't anyway. know. I don't know. Anyway, it's, anyway, she it's said been around. She said you were too dirty. I but, hate. Uh, I, I hate that woman, Elaine from the ice house. Oh, so sad. <laughs> hate is such a strong word, Douglas. <laughs> yeah, my jokes suck too. <laughs> you know what it was, man? They were trying for something different back then. They were trying for that sort of Jerry Seinfeld esque observatory Wayne Cotter type comedy yeah you know? I, again I've grown up enough you can handle the hit that that I understand well I had we did a show we had a party at Super Bowl we always have the two big parties at my house the 4th of July and Super Bowl and we did Super Bowl and we we hired a, had a band playing on the outside deck how many people were over your house probably 80 holy shit uh, dude you're the life of the party if no, I'm the host of the party. That's what's great. Uh, I'm not the life. I'm the host. I'm running around. You got, you know where drinks are. A lot of people don't know the other people. A lot of friends come from out of town. Comics uh, come, and the locals. So I'm always introducing people, making sure everyone's happy. I'm fucking. I, I'm I'm the Hugh Hefner of Bisbee without the chicks. That's chicks. pretty dope. <laughs> So, like, I love uh, you actually enjoy well, your neighbors but, and you have a nice community. And we've never had a noise complaint where we should have because it's the most silent neighborhood at night where I, you can hear people two blocks away talking on their porch wow. if people are talking. And then we'll wow. have bands and you're like, never a noise complaint till we put on, well, well let's, there's a bunch of comics here. Let's put them on outside wow. on a microphone in a quiet neighborhood. Wow. And Christine Levine went on, never had the cops called once. Within eight minutes of Christine Levine being on stage, there's cops there. Wow. Oh, that's and hilarious. And I went out, and I go, uh, noise complaint? Actually, it's a language complaint. She's talking about, oh, having four kids. Yeah, my pussy looked like it swallowed a dog and it chewed its way out. Uh, <laughs> In a very quiet... Uh, uh. That's amazing. <laughs> Sub suburban neighborhood. Oh, that's and hilarious. that was the only time we had ever again, now I forget that's fucking what you hilarious. said that led me into the story. Well, just that you got a nice little community. It's it sounds cool. It sounds like a, a fun the, place to live for well, you. Well the cop walked in, he's outside, now he walks through the gates and the, the house is like set lower than the gates and he opens it up and there's eighty people. <laughs> In my yard. Oh my God! <laughs> watching a show, and he walks up and he goes, "All right, uh, first of all, why weren't we invited?" And it's like really cool, oh, like when hilarious. you wave at cops, like that's a great, great. That's hilarious. Great life. That's hilarious. What a fucking cool guy. Holy shit! That's your like main cop in town? No, that's one of the cops. How we, many cops you got? Probably, uh, I'd say eight. Dude, 
That's a way to live, man. That's a, a much more manageable way to live. It sounds like a really smooth environment. As long as you can keep people from being assholes. But if you were a teenager, what a pain in the dick oh, that yeah, would be. Oh, yeah, no. Ugh. I'm terrified you, of teenagers because if I oh was a teenager God. in that town, I'd be busting windows oh, yeah. out of boredom oh, yeah, and spray for paint sure. shit. Special, yeah, especially, you know, guy, you're giving your fucking address out. They're going to start showing up at your fucking house. Yeah, there's a lot. I of can't even get my friends there. I can't even get you there. It's so far out of the way, and you like me from what I know. I love you. <laughs> How far is it close from the closest airport? It's uh, Tucson's the closest airport, and it's an hour and forty minutes from the airport. That's not bad. Two hours from Tucson proper. It's such a silly thing you did. Just fucking <laughs> pack up and move there, but it seems to have worked. You know, you can make things happen. You can manifest that shit with your mind. You know, I make like when we were like starting out and you think about it back when you're like in your 20s and you were doing stand-up you know would you would you have ever thought did you have the kind of freedom that you have now to do whatever the fuck you want whenever you want to do it just set up shows everywhere through email blasts on the internet throw a fucking tweet out here they do a podcast <laughs> every now and then and you can essentially just live your life and the way you want a hundred percent yeah no, no one no one can tell you it's incorrect <laughs> you have to, to you know I, you gotta you can't put in that bit you have to back this up you have to you know you can do whatever the fuck you want. You're well, I, I'm completely still, self-sustaining. I, I, I'm still, like, I have enough terror of my audience that I, I, I'm, I'm all, it, it keeps me in check. Yeah. Where you, uh, fuck, I need, I can't go back there without new material. Yeah. I can't ever start, I, I, I could never go on the loop of people doing the classics, like, I'm terrified gotta, of stage enough because of that. You gotta constantly give them new shit. You gotta constantly give them something, some kind of content. With us, it's uh, podcasts are three and sometimes four times a week now, you know. And then you know we're doing these shows on a regular basis too. And I, I know a lot of them are return people, so it's a lot of new shit I'm trying. To a fault, I'm always playing to myself, where I'd rather see a comic f- fucking up and failing <laughs> grandly. <laughs> Than repeating themselves yes. with confidence for yeah. decades on end. Well, just yeah. do the shit from the thing I heard. Guys yeah. that yell out old bits. I, I yeah. if I could, I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't it's... remember how they go. Thankfully, or I might acquiesce to your peer pressure. I've tried to acquiesce and butcher them. I've done that a couple of times where I forgot like big chunks that were really funny in the bit. It's you just... remember the point, but yeah. not what made it funny. Yeah, uh, I've I've like lost like and then driving home going. Oh, no, I that's forgot it. the fucking beginning. Oh. That's my Jesus. problem when I, when I take time off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, well, a lot of times front load a tour with a couple of gigs that you don't want to go back to. <laughs> Spartanburg, but you do. South Carolina. Oh, but you do. And you know what can but, help you but, with that? But no, I'm saying that where you go, okay, I, I know I'm not going to remember most of my punchlines, but I'll be okay with it because I don't want to go back to Spartanburg, South Carolina, well, which what, actually was a good gig. A what helps times. you with that with me is my phone. Because I record all my gigs on my phone. I know, so whenever I have new shit, I can always just go back to the phone. It's so huge. Man. That's why I'm having Chaley over there record my shit on the That's road. That's a good move. You got yourself a red man. He looks a little less responsible and intelligent than red man, though. Uh, not- I, I'd put Chaley up against red man as a tour manager. He yeah, does, but he Brian can do- doesn't manage a tour. You can only be a red band. You can't be a red band and a tour manager. That's like some oh, fucking no. oh, Costco Chaley. type shit. I will fuck it. I will put money on the purpose. table right now. You went, yeah. He, he can do inside. red band and tour manage and sell your merch and make sure that That's you have crazy. steak and shake fucking breakfast. That's Foxconn. He heard you mention red it. Band. You didn't ask him to. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're, he heard you, are, you in the van. You're breaking a man. Mention. <laughs> yeah. not, That's why he's over there yeah, sleeping. That's oh, crazy. I don't want him to work that hard. I know how much listen, energy listen he's to, got. And that's not enough. Listen, to, listen. To, uh, Chaley has been snoring in the room. He'll he almost ne- uh, not the ne- room. What do you mean the room? You have one room in a, in a hotel room. You only have one room. This was all a, of you. A, no. Well, no. Actually, we share a room on the road. Do you really? Yeah, we're fucking, yeah, we're pinching pennies and we like each other. Oh, Jesus, that's weird. But the point is, we've been in a room <laughs> where Chaley snores like, not a necrophiliac, what do you, a narcoleptic. Oh, God. He'll just drift into sleep. And, yeah, it's probably, and, probably a While sleep he's apnea. snoring, I, I was asking a trivia question to someone. I'm like, what's the fucking movie, the thing? And he's, oh, uh, whatever, and yell out the movie name and go right back to sleep. 
that guy's a fucking yeah. No, he's, he's a, a trooper. Poor He's guy. A, Poor he, guy. He got a little slave. Do you have a P.O. box? We can slave. Like, <laughs> he tour managed fucking Hedberg in the day. Like, us is nothing compared to the shit he had to go through with Hedberg. Do you have a P.O. box? We can send blankets for him? Or? Yeah, 12 Van really, Dyke Street, I never, really, Arizona. Uh, I never had a tour manager. I don't even understand it. Well, I mean, the, the closest to it, like... Well, when I when mean, we're driving on go, the road. Like, hey, we have to pick this, you, get picked yeah. up here. You've never done, a, like, a driving tour. Yeah, of, I've like, done one. We did one um, when I did the Maxim thing with Charlie Murphy and John Hefferon. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was, was a big driving thing. It was a lot of flying as well, but we did, like, 22 different places in a month. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. That was, like, that, way... That was, that was off. Yeah, we just, <laughs> we just did 17 in three weeks, and then we're doing another 17 in three weeks. Some of them we didn't need to do. Yeah, Some definitely. of them were, they were like really poorly planned, and it was unfortunately not. We, oh, you did Pensacola as well? Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't think we did. I don't think we did anything. No, no, we, we, no. Any we Sorry, that was just for him. No, we did. We did Miami. We showed sure. up at Pensacola think, as a fucking complete Porky's gig. But a yeah, Porky's gig? Yeah, just like this, like. 80 people in this Porky's bar on like just CD, but it was fun. Like, I like that. I like trading up. We did the right. Georgia State, but they were and then Stanhope do... fans still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so great. that's fine. As long as the are people, it really doesn't matter where the fuck you put on the show, you get a very similar audience, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, they're great. We get the same audiences in Canada, it's crazy. We get the same kind of audiences Canada's in Canada fucking that great. we do. It's amazing, really it's amazing, good. yeah. I always say it's America. Vancouver, please. I'll take it. I always say it's America with 20% less douchebags. It really is. But you did Edmonton and Calgary. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, but that's where it was kind of the closest to To America. (laughs) Yeah, but you know what, man? In Edmonton, they really like me because Edmonton is the home of uh, MFC, which is uh, the biggest mixed martial arts organization in Canada. And uh, that guy puts on shows at the same venue that I do stand-up at. So there's a lot of MMA fans there right. because of the UFC. So I, uh, there's a lot of guys. Like, even before I was selling out in Canada, I think I was selling out that place. It was like the crowds were crazy, and they're super fucking nice. Even the hecklers. Like, there was this one crazy lady who heckled me for, like, 20 minutes. It was the most ridiculous shit ever. She came to the front. She was, like, showing me her tits and all, all kinds of nonsense for, like, 20 minutes. But she was fucking very good natured the entire time. <laughs> she never got pissy with me, never got angry. She and when I say friendly. those towns are douchebaggy, they're still great they're towns. Great. They're great towns. They're just filled with guys. Shapir, how was it, baby? Good, great. I got a. Uh, I, I, am I gonna have enough yeah. time to piss? Yeah. Why don't yeah. you get up there and take a leak, man? Relax. Yeah. Stretch I'm gonna, out. I'm gonna smoke one more cigarette. Ari Shapir's in the fucking house. Yeah. Hi, Ari. You're savage. How is it? Jaylee, great in there. find yeah. cigarettes. Good. Yeah, see, you got a slave. Look at this, Brian. He, he's comparing this slave to you. See, this is, a, this is American Union skilled labor. <laughs> and what you have over there is some Chinaman that you found on a train. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he didn't have a home. And you, uh, you took him in and you taught him English. And does he spoon you at you night? Or him. Does it's he... horrifying. And then all, no disrespect to my Chinese friends out there. I just said that because Chinese slave labor that was used to create the railroad. It was a very <laughs> poorly right. thought out analogy. <laughs> but, yeah, you got a slave, buddy. Congratulations. What is a slave? Yeah, Powerful a slave. Tony Hinchcliffe. What's up, buddy? Oh, my goodness. Joey Diaz is in there just absolutely uh, I'm, I might, I might have to go watch this. I might have to He's go watch this. He's annihilating on a Why don't level you, you two just... guys speak amongst yourselves, and then Shafir, you could speak to him as well. I got uh, yeah. go. to go see <laughs> Joey Diaz. Uh, is, is this like the uh, <laughs> Howard Stern wrap-up show? Because I'm going with you. Oh, you're going with me? And now okay. we'll have the interns. Yeah, yeah we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll interns. Let's have the interns. <laughs> this is fucking Ari Shafir here. Respect. Hey, hey, Tony yo, Hinch. You call Chaley He's a slave. Not I'll call interns. your interns. <laughs> <pumps. laughs> oh, my goodness. He's got slave labor. The guy he moves to Bisbee. He's that close to starting a cult. He's already got slaves. <laughs> He's got fucking servants. One in 6,000 people in Bisbee are slaves. <laughs> <laughs> Light my cigarette! <laughs> Do you remember the time we were driving home from doing mushrooms and you were peeing yeah, out the door out of the my car. car on the highway? Yeah. I was like, he's going to die. I was like, this is how he's going to die. This is gonna, uh-huh. this, I was just worried about getting pee in your car. Suck. That's how I thought I was going to oh. die. Not tumbling down the highway, but I got tinkle in your oh, car and I you was, chucked me out. I wasn't, wow. I wasn't worried about that silly car. I just didn't want you to die. That's scary. It was holding onto the handle. I, now I know what wait, those handles wait, are for. Wait, you filmed that. <laughs> yes, I did. You were filming yes, and driving yes, at 70 miles an hour. I'm going to die. I just didn't want 
long Where's that video, Joe? Uh, I wish I, I knew. I was just worried about his house. Actually, thing. I think it was, they put it on the man yes, show. Yes, that's right. They did. We put it on the man show. Yep. Oh. So no one would ever see it. <laughs> <laughs> Have they offered, like, like hey, we want to put this ridiculous. on DVD, or are they just not going to do the it? The man show? Yeah. Oh, no. Actually, oh, here. Here's a, for you people out there listening. I have all the master tapes on what? VHS. The you masters do? with the timestamp. Wow. Yeah. Get your yeah. slave yeah. to fucking put it online. Why aren't no. those on torrent? <laughs> I was going to put it on eBay. What do you think oh. I've done? Oh, <laughs> this motherfucker's selling shit, ladies and gentlemen. I thought this was an open community here. I thought we were all open source like a motherfucker. Well, you Let me come make copies of it first. But you are you allowed to have that? Two one two Van Dyke. No, 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 no. Are you allowed? Are you allowed to have that? You should be really careful. Like, is that like someone's? Property? I don't know. I want. I oh, want to get rid of it. It's can't. a fucking hey, that another could, bunch of junk. Gotta I gotta borrow piss. it. I have to go on stage. Get. I have no idea what I'm saying. Powerful Doug Stanhope. Oh Jesus. Get out there. Let bitches know. I don't have earphones. Let bitches know what time it is. Doug Stanhope. Yeah. Your slave number two is in, in trail. <laughs> <laughs> Taking care of shit. <laughs> Nothing wrong with slaves. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers got slaves. Oh, that's hilarious. Doug Stanhope yeah. best slaves. That's so funny. Have you noticed this? Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Have you noticed this? Doug Stanhope no, best slaves now? <laughs> hey, man, funny. can you come over and be on the podcast? He's not in here. He's not in here. He was. Uh, he has to go back He's in and get slave. cigarettes. I want oh. to sit down and interview with him. What it's like to get Chaley? Doug, Doug Stanley. You know, cigarettes. Chaley's been around for a while because when I used to do, I Chaley. used to do Doug's uh, website, and he's he used to be on the message board, and I used to hang, talk to him back in the day. Dude, how dare he compare that guy to you? <laughs> That's so rude. He's like completely discounting your sense of humor. Yeah, your contributions, he's a hater. Your, your technical skills. Doug Stanhope's a hater. It's Everyone knows that. Everyone knows he's a hater. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> he is silly though to to connect you with that guy. That guy does everything. That's that's a ridiculous job. That yeah, that's a slave. He's got a slave. Yeah. The guy gets him cigarettes. That's that's a slave. Oh, you just don't smoke. Yeah, you can wait. You or you go get your unless own cigarettes. you hire someone who does that kind of shit and that kind of. No, shit. I mean you just don't smoke cigarettes. That's why you don't have oh, that's someone why getting I don't have cigarettes. Someone. No, right. please. That's ridiculous. Yeah, what would it be like? Like getting Joe a. What do I Heineken? ever ask anybody to get yeah, me? Yeah, you don't. I don't ever ask anybody ever. to get me anything. Yeah. I'm completely he's self-sufficient. Just not, he's just not uh, technologically yeah. set, um, savvy. Yeah, but it's not just that. The you guy gets some cigarettes. Te- techno stuff. <laughs> the guy gets some cigarettes. He likes having a guy like wait on him. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, it's a great oh, yeah. thing to have. I love a slave. Oh, you should get, an, get an Asian girl one. Great. Don't Joe. get me wrong. I'm not criticizing <laughs> him. I'm just pointing out what it is. Joe, if you ever get one, can you get an Asian girl, please? Just oh, like a, an, an, yeah, that would be a good move. But um, <laughs> what if somebody wanted to sell themselves into slavery to you? Would you buy it? Wow. It'd be who is it and how much? Four months' salary. Let's even it out for everybody. Like, Four months' like, salary. Like, let me turn it on you since I'm married. How about you? What if? Because mm-hmm. you're kind of crazy and you're doing well right now. And uh, if you start really, like really balling, start doing theaters, making crazy money, yeah. and then uh, some, you say, you know, I'm looking for uh, an assistant, but I just I don't want to tolerate <laughs> any bullshit. So I basically want you to just be my slave for four months, including sex. Whatever I want, you know, and I'll pay you X amount. And you just hire some super hot, let's say, let's Korean say chick. Yeah. Should we say Korean? Right. Some super hot <laughs> Asian fantasy. Taekwondo black Korean. belts. <laughs> Taekwondo black belts. And she also is like your bodyguard. Oh, and nice. That's a, good, that's a good one, yeah, too. Yeah, she's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. How about that? And she can kick your ass, and you get to fuck her. And you pay her like 700 a week. I remember you had yeah, this idea a long time yeah. ago, Joe, and where you were in the office. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I didn't, Brian. <laughs> Listen, dude. Bruce Lee <laughs> outfit that was just sitting there in the corner. <laughs> I knew somebody wanted to develop a Coke habit. Jeff Richards thought about it just so he could say, just so he could have girls around. I was like, girls like Coke. Oh, that's so true. And I'm like, what, so what are you going to do? You're going to develop it? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm just I remember when it. I was a kid. I was like 18 or 19, and I was at this party, and we left the party, and some girl said, uh, you know, uh, I just want to get some Coke. Can we just get some? And I'm like, Coke? You don't want Coke. And she got so mad at me because I was like, you know, down. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, she got so pissed at me. And it, was, it turned out that my friend, I didn't even know, my friend had been selling it the whole time. And I was just like... I didn't understand. Why she was would think, missing like, it. Oh, no, yeah, I, I was like, it. "Why do you want coke? You don't want coke." She's like, "What the fuck? I want fucking coke." Don't tell me what I love and Ooh. need. That's a that's a nutty Coke's one. That's the man. least social drug. It seems to be. I've never done it, but I've seen the effects. I've told the story a hundred times, but I'll tell it one more time in case you haven't heard it. 
I was in the highway, and this is one of the first Coke images I rem ever remember. And we were driving, and there was a car next to us that had the dome light on. And as we drove by them, I looked in the back seat, and there was a girl doing a line off a mirror. And she looked up at me as she's about to do the line. She goes, fuck you. <laughs> she gives me the finger and fucking screams fuck you at me. <laughs> Joe, what is this from? Look at the TV. This is fucking awesome. Oh, that's from. Um, <laughs> I was. That's that's uh, my impression of how Chuck Liddell used to do, like after he won his fights. Oh yeah. That we were talking about like post-fight celebrations, and I said Chuck Liddell has like the greatest of all time because he would just throw his arms back and fucking roar. Yeah. And when Chuck was the king, when he was the the UFC light heavyweight champion, he was knocking like so many great fighters out. When he would do that, it was like, whoa, it was like, this guy's the fucking monster. He's the monster in yeah, yeah. there. He's just, Rawr! Releases tension. I mean, you know, he beat some fucking tough guys when he was the, the light heavyweight champion. And when he did it, when he knocked them out, man, it was, was he, you know, he did some staggering shit. Chuck Liddell had some, he had some glory years, man. So that, that fuck, his celebration was my favorite because it was so raw. Yeah, it was pretty you know? cool. Yeah. yeah. Are you Wasn't the, the one where Mark Coleman ran into the audience and was like pushing people around? Mark Coleman did? Somebody had like a roid, not, not a roid. Well, a, you remember when we were in Brazil stuff? and Jose Aldo ran oh, yeah. into the stands? Yeah. Remember that? It was great. It was right next amazing. to me. Amazing. He just ran into the stands was and embraced him. the crowd. His countrymen. Yeah, dude. He when you fight in Brazil and you're Brazilian, there, there's like so much patriotism involved. It's really unlike anything we've ever seen in America. They're they're so much more proud. It's amazing. Joe, do you watch Boo Boo? Do you know who Boo Boo Child is? Boo Boo Child. Yeah, it's it's I've seen little, that online. It's, yeah, like this crazy girl that's like this like redneck it's little beauty pageant like John Bonet girl. Yeah. It is so but insane. I'm super excited because I do pedals. She just got a new uh, show on TLC, and it is the best thing that, like, crack cocaine. This chick is fucking. Her mom is a coupon queen because she's one of those women that collects coupons and has like a million toilet bowl rolls. You know, she, like, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at her house. Look, watch, they show her house. Her house is just tons of. I like to win because I want to win money. A dollar makes me holla, honey, boo boo. <laughs> and that's her mom gives her this energy drink mixed with Mountain Dew before each show. My special juice is gonna help me win. My special juice is gonna help me win. <laughs> She's taking stimulants. <laughs> Look how crazy she is. Beauty is so boring. I don't want to do it. This is why I to judge. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's hilarious. <laughs> my God, God, she's, you, you have to see this, folks. She's yeah. grabbing her fat and shit. Yeah, and she she was on the show called Tara Tiaras or whatever it's called. And I guess she, uh, because of how great she was, she now has her own show. Who's on stage? I'll be back. Stand up? Is stand up on? Yeah, almost. I heard it was amazing up there. How was it? Oh, oh my god. Tremendous. Was it tremendous? Tremendous, tremendous cocksucker. If, that, if they would have taped that tonight, they would have canceled well on Monday. They, I think they taped it for you. I had them tape all your sets. <coughs> I think. Uh, well, I guess we should end this and watch, go watch Stan Hope, right? Uh, so, yes. Joe Rogan, you know why I was laughing? Why are we laughing? <laughs> Did you think that? Is that you thinking? Oh, I know how you fucking yeah. think. I've been hanging out with you for 13 years. Joey uh, just said off mic that you, you could tell every time Doug uh, lit a cigarette, you could tell. I wish he was, uh, he was super awesome and healthy. But anyway, Let's that's Doug. Watch. He's still awesome. We're going to go watch him. So how long has this podcast been going on? Uh, it's been going on almost two hours, so we're good. All right, kill so, this bitch. All right, guys. Thank, thank you, everybody. We'll do this again. Yes. Maybe tomorrow night. Yeah, maybe. Later. Uh, if you guys want to come to a live Death Squad show, go to icehousecomedy.com and search for Death Squad. And we do this once or twice a week. And we'll be back tomorrow, maybe. Uh, and follow everyone's uh, Twitter ha handles. You'll find it at uh, deskwad.tv. And don't forget to subscribe. And the new T-shirt is now for sale 
Uh, just go to DeskSquad.tv and click on Death Squad Store. Later.